attendance and I'll just adjourn the meeting uh, while we're waiting for more information and staff. So we keep going with the meeting at 9.44 a.m. and thank you for your attendance, councillors. Um, moving on to, um, we have someone to move on the minutes of the 10th of February. Councillor Edwards. I'll move that the minutes of the ordinary meeting held on the 10th of February 2021 be confirmed. Uh, and do we have a uh, seconder? Councillor Hancock. Any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak? We'll go to the vote. All those in favour? 9 0. Okay, moving on. Is there anything before we move on to the agenda? Okay. Sorry, it's Councillor Hancock and then. Uh, seconded uh, yeah. by yeah. Councillor Hancock. Yeah. Moved by Councillor Edwards. Councillors, are you happy um, that we deal with the on-the-table items as part of the late agenda? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyone else that? You tell us when you like. Yeah. Could we have a mover and seconder, councillors, please, just to ch change that, to include those? But just move that the, the stuff that's laid on the table be dealt with in the, the late agenda. Part of the late agenda, yeah. Have a second, the Council McMullen. Any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak? We'll go to the vote. All those in favour? 9 0. Tell us when you're ready to Yeah, so you, you can sort of follow then, Mr Mayor. So that, that was that the. Um, the, uh, the items that were laid on the table, should I say from the previous meeting or? That were uh, laid on the table from the previous meeting. Be dealt with in the late agenda. And that was Councillor Burkett and Councillor yep. McMullen. Yep. Perfect. Kelly's going to be so impressed with us. I she know. Comes back. <laughs> this will be her lovely welcome back um, <laughs> present. All right. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Appreciate your patience there. No worries. 11.1 .1, Policy Review Cemeteries Operation. I'd like to move contrary to the Officer's recommendation. Thank you, Mr May. Um, would the manager like to come forward? Yeah. And just the amendments you'd like to make, Mr May. Uh, that the Cemeteries operations policy. So um, we, we just need to go back and amend the policy. Yeah, I oh, know. I'd, I'd like it to go away and come back and be brought back to council. Oh, okay, sure. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Do you mind if we just pick, for the moment, the tick, just pick a seconder, Councillor Taylor? Yeah, I appreciate second. that's not Councillor yours, but Burkett, and you can change this. If I've just got Councillor Taylor moment. for the okay. moment. Oh, okay. Yeah, so right yeah, so if you can outline the motion, uh, Mr. Mayor. I didn't touch it. I didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> that council uh, policy review cemetery request that the cemeteries operations policy. Come back to council or um, be re-presented after incorpor incorporation of uh, an in 
internal review mechanism. based from issues that are unresolved at an operational level. Um, including the time frames in which the issues need to be resolved before burials are needed to be conducted is point one. I'm happy for some tidy up as we go along once we've got that. And then point two, that the um, the policy Once um, approved by council, um, goes to community consultation with stakeholders. Can you repeat that again, please? Sorry. Um, before final adoption. Okay, so councillors, just a couple of things there. Um, the first part is that council already has an internal review mechanism and that applies to every single part of council's operations. That's called the complaints management policy and process. So um, part of that is that we always give the manager the opportunity, generally speaking, the, the manager the op opportunity to solve the problem in the first instance. And then if the manager can't solve it, um, he takes it to the director um, and that gives the director the opportunity to solve it. If they can't solve it, they will automatically bring a report to council to enable... So it may mean um, that there's budget implications or that there might be uh, something that might affect a broader number of the community. Um, so that in those particular cases, there might need to be a strategic direction from council um, to, to resolve that that particular operational issue. Um, so just just caution um, that that's not necessarily limited to cemeteries. That applies to every part of our business, and and councils are required to have that policy as well. So um, and uh, the the other suggestion I would make is that um, it's not. Uh, good practice to have consultation um, after an approval. Um, so perhaps some better wording could be that um, the draft policy um, come back to council for review. Yeah, I'm happy with that. The, the uh, but you know, like rather than just have the consultation and it goes in the mix, I'd rather have something that minimises what stakeholders have to look at and just go, this is what we're considering, what should you? Yeah, so... Councillor Lavin. Um, um, Mr Mayor, I was just, what issues have we had before with cemetery? Uh, is there many, many issues in my term, um, and I believe this will solve a lot of the issues. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's unusual because the normal complaints process is fine but this is on a timeline that people need to so that's why mm -hmm. I, I think it needs a special case so there has yeah, been issues anyway, we'll get into the debate. yeah, yeah. Uh, councillors could i suggest that if if timing is of the essence that it's not the cemetery operations policy that it's that's adopted that we go back and update the complaints management policy um, because we've got various types of complaints within that and we and council sets the time frames for those sorts of for the various complaints that, that are in there. Um, so that's the, the appropriate governance mechanism to do that. Mr Mayor, can I just ask a question about CEO? Um, I'm very, very comfortable with the comment that you just made, but I think 4.66, we're basically, as somebody who can actually um, pre-order a grave, could find 
where in the opinion of the authorised person, the digging of any particular grave is impossible or impracticable because of flooding, wet ground, rock or other reason, that the authorised person may in his or her absolute discretion refuse a burial in that grave and may order the relocation of the burial to another grave plot, regardless of prior arrangements. I would think somebody who um, may be in a marital situation pre-book for the husband and wife to be buried together. I think during a, a, um, a funeral, very emotional time, it may be that particular clause there may cause incredible undue angst and emotional over, um, regardless of, and the wording is regardless of prior arrangements, which means regardless of the booking of a, a, uh, a joint plot. Mm -hmm. So that one there, I think, is the wording that needs, may, may need to be looked at. Any comment on that? No, um, I can just say on, on that sort of thing, obviously that's kind of in effect because it can lead to problems. I just, if there comes to the danger of our staff kind of preparing yeah. that, that since Worst Hotels and Safety have come in and we've got years of yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry councillors. Something else I, I just realised I picked up in the last meeting as well. Um, could you just also make sure that your um, microphones are on and we'll just keep vigilant today to make sure that when an officer speaks that they're actually speaking into a microphone mm -hmm. because the community can't hear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we just... Um, a, lot of, a lot of reservations that I made years ago before Workplace Health and Safety came in and some of the graves are, are impossible to, to bury, but we try and honour all the reservations that are there. So, yeah. That clause is just there for, you know, if we have to make that decision. Yeah. And uh, we did have that one recently there where uh, it was difficult, but um, it was difficult, but we, um, we managed that one. It wasn't, it wasn't a safety issue, it was just accessibility, but, you know, with um, we, we, the use of a crane and a few other things, we got it sorted. So that one there, you know, we do try and try and you know, we will even go out of the way to tr really try and make it make it work. I think you're saying, Dale, it's just if it's a safety thing, like if it's just too wet and it's going to collapse. It's too wet, if it's going to collapse, or um, we can't get shoring in. That makes it difficult as well. So. But um, for this particular one, we you know, we got a crane in to get the shoring in. So we, you know, we, you know, you know in all instances there, we go the absolute best. We don't say no lightly. It's only probably you know, the only the instances, Dale, where you got where you can't physically can't do it. Can't physically it's, do it, or yeah, it's just. Um, for machinery to get in. But it's probably, I guess, from what council is saying, is that through you, Mr. Mayor, in terms of that clause, um, is there some sort of notification or is there some sort of review? Yeah, so I, I think maybe um, if we're trying to solve a problem, the, the Mayor said that there's been many, many cases in his time. I, it would be helpful to actually have what those cap many, many cases are so that we can actually go back and review the particular circumstances um, that led to that issue because um, then we can make sure that we're actually solving the right problem um, because there might be not just one particular issue, it might have been a, a couple of issues in the mix. Council. Council. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I'm not just the highlighted section internment the practice of placing an urn in a niche wall and closing it up, that's not limited to that though, is it? People can still put the ashes in the grave with their, with their partner or, you know, what, no. Yeah, no, because, yeah, that's right, yeah, no, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. There was a bit of a misunderstanding there, I think, misunderstanding recently at Wallambella, but I don't know whether it got sorted. Yeah, yeah. thanks. So, CEO, what I'm going to move is uh, down the bottom, we need to have that operational including time frames and then we need to finish with um, to be decided by council uh, which is like our um, internal review policy if it can't be solved and what I'm suggesting council is that our policy will have through it that and all of our staff will know that there's a mechanism so we can't say no we just say look at the moment but you do have a process to appeal this and this is very important because I've had people in tears many times mm -hmm. about it. So this is a way that they've got a mechanism that they can do and it's a very tight time frame. Sometimes there's only a week before or less. Um, and 
hopefully it'll be solved at an operational level, but if it's not, we, I believe we need this in the policy rather than our complaints policy. It, it needs to be in both, Mr Mayor. Exactly, it, it could be it, in both. Could, could yep. we just say that um, Council request that the relevant policies be associated with cemeteries be reviewed, yep. that the relevant policies um, associated um, with with cemeteries um, and complaints be reviewed um, to provide for an escal an escalation um, to council um, in instances where the matter uh, cannot be resolved operationally. That's effectively what you're saying in, in the in the required time frames. Of the of the burial, yeah. Time frames um, required for the burial. And would we need to say um, what about the internment for the ashes? Is that no, that's I just that's included. I'm quite happy with what Manager Dale just said. It's it just a little bit of confusion, I think, the other week. So. Um, could but if I, there was an ashes thing where we don't, it's not a part of our policy and it can't be solved. Yeah, because if we, if we, if there's a particular issue and we up one, update one policy without updating the other, um, that's, yeah, that's that's not good governance, and 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 it also gets everything out of um, sync. So internal review, the, the mechanism has to be the complaints policy. That's where um, the legislation requires it to be. Um, but if there is any um, uh, mis mismatch, um, then we can look at both at the same time. And, and that last point, community consultation and stakeholder, stakeholder and community consultation, because the stakeholders know this backwards. So what do you mean that stakeholders oh, are different could be, to community? Uh, no, as well as. Um, that could be your uh, funeral parlours, you know, that's that's a big stakeholder um, to have a look at the policy and help make sure it's the best that we can have it. Consultation um, with key stakeholders and the broader community. Yeah. Um, E.g. have your say? Uh, it can be, yeah. I, I don't mind how we do it, but... If someone's had a terrible experience, they'll remember it. Um, could I ask councillors that um, we also include uh, three that um, that specific um, concerns um, be be forwarded uh, to the manager so that we can investigate those individual instances. I think, Specific. Been, I think they've all been in the CR system, CEO in the past, so they should come up. There's probably some people that um, are too emotional to even talk about that time, and then another one could work against you. They might be that emotional, they'll say things that they later regret too, so yeah. during that time. Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm just not aware of many, many. Uh, Manager Dale. Yeah, so if. if we will be solving the wrong problem if if we um, don't have those particular cases. So any specific past, um, but um, sorry, just bear with me. The, um, past concerns. Um, That, that haven't been able to be resolved because there have been circumstances where there were initially concerns but the officers resolved mm. them operationally um, to the family's satisfaction. Um, so any um, victim and forward, any part, past concerns that haven't been able to be resolved um, satisfactorily um, at an operational level yeah, I think a lot of them, or most of them have, but we've 
and elected members are able to get involved, which I believe this policy means we probably wouldn't. So, so we need to, to know where you've had to get involved that the matter hasn't already been resolved operationally. Through you, Mayor, <coughs> Madam CEO, would it, could we get a report from the manager over the time frame that the Mayor has suggested there have been many, many issues, yep. just to illustrate to Council how many there are? Because if it is only a couple, it might trigger the, the Mayor to remember all the others that have obviously approached him or whoever that, that may not have actually got into the system. <coughs> that way Council's informed of what obviously Cast, is issues um, at the cinemas. Customer requests and complaints um, in relation to the yeah. to the cemeteries. Yeah, some of it is long grass at the cemetery. Some of it is other things as well to do with burials that are happening. Um, it can be, but I, I I don't run the customer um, CR system, so we should be able to get that an operational level. Yeah, so that that will trigger you. Good point, Councillor O'Neill, that if we're doing the two, if the elected members have any that, that are at front of mind for you, that where you feel that something hasn't been resolved, um, please pass that through to us. And then um, we'll also do the other way from the operational and have a look at what, what was resolved operationally and then the two can meet in the middle and we'll make sure the policy framework is right. And, and Mayor, I've got a question more on a process mm -hmm. uh, side of things. Um, uh, through you to the CEO, we uh, as a council had agreed that there would be a review on a lot of policies, yes. right? This is obviously the start of that. I, I, I may have made the wrong assumption, um, uh, so correct me if I am wrong, that uh, these policy reviews were going to, we were going to get a briefing as council yep. at a briefing session and then they were coming to an ordinary meeting because some of these things you'd get a flavour in in having a, a, a broader discussion rather than getting bogged down in a council meeting. Is that is that the intent or...? A well, this is... We could probably use this as the pilot. We, we It can be the new council's first look at the complaints policy and make oh, yeah. sure that you're comfortable with that. Uh, it gives us something to have a meaningful discussion about and we can have a look at the c cemeteries and how the two policies interact. And then once we get happy with the process, we can roll it out to other... Because when policies. it comes to this one, Mayor, um, You've highlighted one of the key stakeholders, of course, are the um, the funeral homes. Wouldn't it be fantastic to invite um, those providers to council to to brief us on and how the operations are are going for them, and that way it can add value to our decision making. I, I yeah, I I don't think that's efficient use of uh, time. I think we. Um we really just ask for the officers to... Well, anyway, let's have the debate about this. And I, I don't agree with four, so I'll take four off my motion. Please, happy for anyone to pass in um, whatever they'd like to, but I believe it's uh, basically in the CR system and some people don't even want to put CRs in about it. Um, OK, uh, now, is the... Yeah. yeah, happy with that. What do you think, Chair? Pass some of the customers to okay. So, for the benefit of the community that count one. Did you want to read that out, Mr. Mayor? Yeah, that council request. That one. Oh, that one council request the relevant policies associated with cemeteries and complaints be received. Be reviewed. Uh, to be reviewed to provide for an escalation to council in instances where the matter cannot be resolved operationally in the required time frames required for the burial slash internment of ashes. Uh, two, the updated draft policies come back to council for review prior to, prior to consultation with key stakeholders and the broader community, e.g. have your say. Three, elected members forward... Um, I, was I getting rid of three? Uh, we, we got rid of four. four. Elected members forward any past concerns they've uh, been able to... They haven't been able to. That haven't been able to resolve to satisfactorily. Resolved. Haven't been able to be resolved satisfactorily at an operational level. Um, now, is the seconder happy to... No, no, we don't have a second. We don't have a second. Well, OK, we had one on the screen, so I was just going to try that. So, well, OK, we'll start again. Would anyone like to second the motion? 
Councillor Burkett. Um, any opposition? I'd like to move an amendment. Um, please go ahead. I'd like to move point four that a report be um, a tabled to a future council meeting uh, highlighting the customer uh, requests that have been um, uh, uh, submitted to council over the period of the last five years. I haven't finished, but I'll. That a report be presented to an upcoming council meeting that includes the customer requests that have been submitted to council over the last five years in relation to issues at our regional cemeteries. Sorry, about issues about issues uh, at our regional cemeteries. Is that an additional motion? No, or could it just amendment. be handled? Amendment. Well, I've moved an amendment. Yeah. Council has moved an amendment. amendment. Okay, so you're finished, Councillor O'Neill. That's it. Uh, do we... Uh, well, I'm not happy with um, accepting that as the mover. Um, um, like changing the motion, so we'll go with that amendment. Do we uh, have a second for that amendment? Yeah, we'll move. Councillor Taylor. Um, do you want to speak to the amendment? Thanks very much, Mr Mayor. I don't think this materially changes the, the substantive resolution in fact, I think it adds value to it. Um, Mayor, you, you uh, brought into the discussion earlier that there are uh, many, many issues coming from our regional cemeteries, and um, I, I think it would be important for um, new councils, councillors and returning councillors to understand what those issues are so that we can ensure that we are um, uh, doing what we should as a council to make what can be a very emotional and difficult period for our community um, in laying their loved ones to rest at our cemeteries. And by getting a report back from our staff in relation to the customer requests that have come in over the last five years, uh, it will highlight what those issues are, but it will also allow councillors um, that have had community members approach them directly to trigger their memory as what other issues that we may have at our regional cemeteries and that um, we can um, address uh, any of those issues going forward. Uh, does anyone want to speak against the amendment? I just have a question. Is Please go question? ahead. Um, to Councillor Neil. Councillor Neil, so is that, that is instead of the other resolution, so therefore what would... No, it's adding to it. So that would be point four? Yes, it would, yeah. Okay, I just wanted to clarify yeah. that because I was a bit confused, but we'd all yeah, follow suit. Yeah, forget it. Councillor yeah. Neil would say that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so it is actually just adding point four to it. That's right. Yeah. It's not in place. Or... Councillor Guthrie. Excuse me, I just have a question for Councillor sure. O'Neill. So if the report is presented, how does that capture when councillors receive phone calls from individuals who haven't put a CR into the system? Because that's point three of the original motion. I understand what's happening now, that mm. this was point four. It's not in place of... Yeah. Will be. Oh, it's, the, not in place it's not the substantive... Motion. No, as I, if I can answer, Mayor, as I said, I actually support the rest of the motion. I think this is adding value to the and substantive that's resolution. I thought it could probably be handled as a separate supplementary motion um, because I, I suspect there, there probably will be consensus about points one to three as well. Okay, well, I'll speak against the motion. Uh, I think this can be skewed and a little bit misleading because whilst it will be all the council information, there is so many people that w are not comfortable putting CRs in, they're not comfortable talking to staff. When they do get a uh, negative um, feedback, they just don't say anything. And it's only people that really know councillors or something that will have the confidence to come up. So I, I don't think this is helpful. I think we could get that information any time 
through for requests for information, um, but I don't think it will give the big picture that's happening because uh, so much goes under the radar. Um, so I won't be supporting this amendment. Does anyone else wish to speak? I just have a question. Councillor Hancock. Mr Mayor, sorry, I'm now really confused because I thought that number three gave the option to everybody that you were just saying that that wouldn't go through a customer request system and it has come to councillors. And so I thought that that would cover that and then number four would be would be then customer request. So therefore we would have the whole picture and the big picture. I, I, like I'm just a bit confused when you said that, like I thought number three encapsulated that point. Well, yeah. Anyway, it, it's fantastic if, if people got information on number three, but it's the silent majority that that don't even talk to us that are just disappointed and we hear it through the gate front and we've never been asked to put a CR so we it can't go in as our system. And yeah, I, I don't think point three from what I'm picking up that there's any dissent, like dissenting views about what ones two and three. But anyway, we've got an amendment. Uh, does anyone wish to speak for the amendment? Councillor Hancock. I just think that um, when you're making a decision um, regarding the cemeteries, the more information, the better. I, I don't I don't see that having less information is a negative. I think the more information that we can get as a council um, is a positive. And, uh, and as a new councillor, I don't know the issues that have been brought up. I, I'd actually like to see the, all the CRs and, and the information so that we actually know what the, the longer term councillors already do know around this table. So that's why I, I actually want to see that. Plus I want to hear from you, Mr Mayor, about who's t spoken to you. And I want to get the whole big picture. That's why I'll be supporting this motion. Uh, does anyone want to speak for the, uh, against the amendment? Does anyone else wish to speak? We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? All those against? Uh, we'll do that vote again. All those in favour? All those against? Um, that's lost, uh, carried, 6-3. Um, is that correct? 5-4. 5-4. 5-4. I went 4-5. Four, yeah. Well, it was carried 5-4. Five, 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 so 5-4. Fine call for a division. Okay, uh, moving on to the general motion. Uh, we've got a mover and Sorry, seconder that's been just, added. Just bear with me for a sure. moment if we could, because um, the division, just to make sure I've captured that okay. So the the division was the five. Could you please put five, your hand up again? Five, four, yep. Um, O'Neill. Hancock, Hancock. Burkett, Taylor and McMullen. Edwards, Mayor Gold, uh, and Councillor Golder called the division. Correct. Yep. Okay, that is the motion now. Okay, would anyone like to speak for the motion? I certainly like to speak for the motion. I do believe that if um, the new council if we have a look at these policies, I think the most efficient way is ask the staff to come up with their um, uh, professional input and bring the policy back. I think that's more efficient than um, uh, having councillors uh, sitting around getting uh, briefings when uh, we're not experts in this area. Um, so I certainly believe there needs to be some fundamental change <laughs> that anyone dealing with our cemeteries um, through the policy will be reassured that there is mechanisms if you're not happy and it can be escalated quickly and if it's not solved at an operational level that uh, can come to a special meeting or a council meeting quickly uh, for decision because I think when communities uh, are touched by council, the rawest time that they're touched by council is when they've lost a loved one and I do believe um, uh, that our staff do a good job, but I do think we as councillors need to do a good job with our policies to make sure they are most responsive uh, to what the feeling we get out in the community. Not everyone puts in a CR or a customer request. Um, some don't say anything, but I think if there's reassurance in the policy and 
That's part of what is communicated to anyone uh, being touched by needing the cemeteries. I think this would be a very positive outcome for this term of council. Uh, would anyone else wish, uh, anyone want to speak against the policy, uh, against the motion? Does anyone else want to speak for it? Does anyone else wish to speak? We're going to the uh, vote. So, sorry, just bear with me, Mr Mayor. So what we're actually moving is one, two, three and four, aren't and we? And four now because it's yeah, part of the motion. Yeah, it's all one motion now. Oh, here it is. Oh, sorry. Are you happy with what's... Had we read that out for the community? The, the one, two and three? Mr. We've definitely that? read that. Yep. Do you want to read four out as well? Or? Yeah. In uh, point four has been added um, as part of the um, uh, vote as an amendment was carried. Um, four, a report be presented to upcoming council meeting that includes the customer requests that have been submitted to council in the last five years about issues in our regional cemeteries. At, at, our, regional. at our regional cemeteries. Okay, we're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? 9 0. Mr. Mayor, can I just ask a question of the CEO? Sure. Does that still show the amendment up there? The vote above. Yeah. That's oh, that's right. I, I lost it. That's right. Not a problem. Thank you. No. Yeah. So uh, that's. So we had the mover yeah. as Councillor Golder and the second by Councillor Burkett, and that was based on the one, two, and three, but no vote taken at that time as an amendment was proposed, and then we had the actual um, resolution. Uh, that point four be included. That was Councillor yeah. O'Neill, Councillor Taylor, the division called, uh, and then we went to the substantive Thank resolution. You. Councillor Golder and Councillor Burkett is still. Okay, so moving on when you're ready, CEO. Yep. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, 11.2, policy review burials on private property. I'd like to move the same as the last motion for this motion. Is everyone, uh, councillors, you're all aware of what that is? We've just done it. No, well, because uh, council has voted for uh, uh, four, I'm happy to put that in there. Also, probably save time. <laughs> <laughs> Very appreciative of that, Mr. Yes. May. <laughs> An hour and a half in, and we're on two. <laughs> oh, They're very important, but we're still an hour and a half in. Proud of positive thinking. <laughs> Two hours. <laughs> it would be handy to have the briefing side of that. That's at the cemeteries. Yeah. Uh, just thinking, councillors. No, um, the first one previously. actually said council request that the relevant yeah, policies yeah. associated with cemeteries. So that's policies plural. That's 
completed in uh, with cemeteries and complaints. Yes, I, I know, but the, that the first pol resolution was broad ranging, so we may not need another. Because there's a one. Ah, oh, I see where you're getting at now. Into number one. Private and uh, private. I guess if yeah. it says burials, then yeah, no, that's fair enough. Good point. We have a seconder for that motion. Well, it can't be the exact motion that cemeteries. If we'll have to say associated with private burials, right? Yeah. Burials on private oh, property. Okay. Deputy Mayor, can I ask you to take over, please? Um, Miss Mayor, I just want to quickly ask you a question sure. before you go, but has there been issues on private burials as well? Uh, yeah, I think it will benefit from all of those steps, uh, especially community consultation. And um, the escalation process is just in support of someone wants to bury someone in, in, uh, on private land. Mayor, you've moved that resolution. Yeah. You can't leave. Okay. Well, then, uh, Deputy, so I'll, oh. I might withdraw my... Oh, no, well, okay. We'll only be a second. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then we had to also make that amendment instances where the matter cannot be resolved operationally full stop. Right. It's a rest. And then in the last five years, about issues pertaining, pertaining yep. to private burials. Okay, so we had a seconder. Councillor Guthrie, any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak to it? We're going to go. We'll just make that on private property. Yep. We're going to go to the vote then. All those in favour? Nine zero. Deputy Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Mayor, Mayor. Who was the second? Who's second? Morning tea. Uh, Councillor Guthrie. Morning tea. Morning tea, then, okay. Mr. Mayor. You well, we might adjourn then, eh? Will you? Um, we'll resume the meeting at ten fifty-seven. Okay. I believe we're on item. Number 11.3, monthly financial report for the period ending 31st of January 2021. Do I have a mover, please? Councillor O'Neill. I move that the monthly financial report for the period ending the 31st of January 2021 be received and noted. Please. Councillor Edwards. Any opposition to the motion? Anyone want to speak for or against the motion? Question, yes, Council Taylor. Update that report. Just hold, can I just get it in front of me, please? around there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what I could do is bring back some information comparing what it was last year so you can... Would you mind? Yeah, no, that's... Yeah. Easy. Yeah, thank yep. you. Thank you. Okay. 
just curious to see how it works. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. Through the chair um, to the director, um, Sharon, is that what is now on the screen that we're looking at that Councillor Taylor asked about? Is that, that's not in the report though, is it? No, it's not. At the last meeting, um, I can't remember which councillor, it was yourself, Councillor Taylor, asked for information about outstanding rates. Uh, we prepare this each month. So I've just forwarded through the latest one. Could, could we amend? Probably. The, I think that's where you're going. It is. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I want that report to be public. Be provided to all councillors okay. about yeah. the um, amount, the value of outstanding rates and charges. Uh, uh, is that monthly? Would you like to see that monthly? Mm. Mm. Sorry, sorry, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yep. Sorry, Yeah, 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 that's, yeah. <laughs> the gremlin just did something to the printer. Um, I could, uh, through you, uh, could I make a suggestion that uh, future monthly reports include um, outstanding rates and charges information? Yeah. Have one report. So, just so I'm clear, I moved the first one. How did the second bit come? That someone's just added that in the conversation. Okay. Is that it? Yeah, yeah, asked the question of the director. Oh, that's all right. So I'm I'm happy to yeah. add that um, two future monthly reports include the value of outstanding rates and charges on a monthly basis. Oh, we, we can probably take out the monthly basis yeah. then. Second, are happy with that, Councillor Edwards? Yeah. Okay. You happy with that? Is yeah. it just the value or is it the number of people on payment could arrangements? We, could we say uh, include information regarding outstanding rates and charges? Yes. So that will cover. Include information regarding outstanding rates and charges. It, it, in relation to, to outstanding or pertaining to might be mm -hmm. to, and then that could give you uh, some flexibility if you're happy with that, Councillor Taylor and Councillor O'Neill, that it's not just the value of outstanding, but it could be the number of people on payment arrangements or the people not on payment arrangements. So through the chair, uh, CEO, um, um, I would be supportive in this resolution that the. Um, report that the director has put together, which is called Monthly Update Rates Debt Recovery, all of that information be part of um, our monthly financial, financial report, report, and therefore that information is is publicly available to the community. Yeah. That's your intent, isn't it, Councillor Taylor? Did that have a particular name? Um, monthly Update Rates Debt Recovery. That's that's what we. Do you want that embedded or just as we've got it on the No, screen? up there's fine, as long as it's all that information. Yeah. yeah. The future monthly reports include information pertaining to outstanding rates and charges. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a question? Yes. It's probably a little bit of a conflict of interest in a way. Is there a report for people like myself that pay weekly in advance or fortnightly in advance? Is that like I wouldn't be the only one pay rates oh, slightly, you know, so that when you get to the end of the term. The pre prepaid pre pre rates. That's probably the word. We, can, we can include that. That was just thought, yeah. you know, yep. Yep. Do you mean, Councillor McMullen, a, a, like a, a total number of people that oh, are no, opting the, into that? The value. Well, the value? Value would be more than, yeah. yeah. I mean. That, that is included uh, as part of our financial statements every year, but we, we can include that as a monthly update. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because that would actually help with dissecting what that revenue figure <coughs> includes. Yeah, that yeah, would be that actually... Revenue be, is actually for next... Yeah, next, that would be a yeah. really good addition, yeah. Councillor McMullen. Both the mover and the second are happy with that extra. Thank you. So anyone want to speak for or against the motion? <laughs> Councillor O'Neill. I'll, I'll speak for... Um, um, thanks to the director for the work that happens around the financials each, each month. I think that's important. But Councillor Taylor's point in adding this to ensure that we are capturing a much broader picture in relation to our rates, I think is, is really important. And Councillor McMullen will recall 
um, the positive feedback that Council received in the previous term in relation to uh, providing the broader community with the full financial picture uh, of um, uh, Council at the time in respect to rates. Um, uh, we have so many good rate payers out there that uh, pay their rates on time uh, and they get incredibly frustrated when they're carrying um, uh, other rate pays in arrears. And uh, I think it's upon us as councillors, first and foremost, to understand what that broader picture is, but then to illustrate to the community not only what, what um, the figures are associated with it, but then we are actually putting things in place to make sure that everyone in our community is paying their fair share uh, and um, we're, we're all carrying the weight. So I think that's really an important addition to our monthly reporting going forward. I'd just like to say something, or oh, ask a question. Is there any appetite um, for anyone to sort of look more into these financials at all? Um, I mean, we get the report every meeting, but no one actually presents the report or tells us really what's going on. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if any, any of the other councillors are, issued, uh, are interested in that as well. If not, we won't. What sort, of, yeah, what yeah, sort no, of information no, would you for, like, Councillor? Just asking for a little bit of, uh, um, you know, interest in it. If it's if people are interested in it, I think it goes probably further than the rates. I think there's probably other things as well. But I'm not I'm not proposing an amendment or anything like that at this point. No. Yeah, pro probably have a think, just as Councillor Taylor has yeah. done, about the types of information that you would like to have. Um, included as yeah. part of that report, more than happy to accommodate. Where, say, um, Director Sharon or yourself uh, present the thing to us and give us a little bit more, <coughs> a little bit more insight into the actual figures themselves. So, uh, are you wanting some commentary? Is that oh, the, the yeah. Do you want the director to speak to the report? Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. That that, yeah, that, yeah, sorry, that's where I'm coming. That's where you're yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think you just want yeah. someone to actually speak to well, the board, just, maybe okay. pull out a few key things and explain them. Or we seem to just go straight across yeah. it and everyone just presents it and then we, sort of, we all yeah. vote on it and then that's the end of the matter. But, but maybe we can get some... Would, would the mover and seconder be happy to um, have a third point then? I'm not sure what reports they are but, or anything of that nature. I don't want to cause any... Just, just a general overview? Yeah, just a general overview. I think it, it probably assists us. So that's my yeah, view anyway. Yeah. So similar to a lot of meeting where you just have yeah. treasurer briefs over there. Just a brief uh, presentation, yeah. Um, uh, through you, Chair, I, um, I don't think there needs to be an additional dot point. I, I, I think the, the, the feedback is clear going forward when the monthly um, uh, financials are tabled. Um, some commentary from the director which will allow all councillors to ask questions which way we are entitled to do and should do if, if the things of interest. Um, but I think having it um, raised today by Councillor Edwards, everyone Are you is happy for us to just use the words in a general overview? Yeah, to be presented by the appropriate um, officer. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, just in relation to the... Uh, I mean, the total well, that like, as in the figures that yes, we see? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'm looking to Councillor O'Neill because he's the mover. I'm not, I'm not supportive of, of um, just highlighting this one. I, th I think that it's across the board that often we call on particular managers or directors to you know, provide some commentary. I, I think what's been raised today is clear that going forward when it comes to the financials, some commentary from the director in relation to what's in front of us. And, and I guess that really um, is perhaps when the chair comes back, maybe a suggestion to the chair that mm. it, it doesn't just move, um, ask for a mover and a seconder and on we go. Mm. Maybe the chair gives the opportunity for the officer to speak if there's anything that, mm. that wants to and be uh, uh, highlighted. Mm -hmm. um, that's and that does happen. Mm. Yeah, so. Anyway, yeah. Any further questions? Or, well, I'll put it to the vote. All those in favour? Eight zero, um, and just so just clarifying for the community there that future monthly reports include information pertaining to outstanding rates and charges. Yes. Okay, item thirteen point one, subject heading Bassett Park Racehorse Trainers Agreement. 
Do I have a mover, please? I may have a comment. Oh, sorry. Councillor Ladbrook. Have you got your form there, please? No, we've changed all that, haven't we? No, but you missed it. We've changed it again. We've changed it again. <laughs> There's a sheet on your table. All right, I'll help you through, though, Councillor Labrook. It's all right. You're this other one yeah, we got. This form. No, yeah, yeah. 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 We're going to be so good at this very soon. <laughs> okay. okay, so who is the matter about? Um, yeah, that, that, that sheet yeah. you got there, George. Is that one? Yeah. Um, well, I am um, a committee member of the Rama Turf Club. So, no, no, the, um, the who is who is it about first? It's a, a racehorse trainer. Trainers, two, yeah. two racehorse trainers. Yep, two. Those trainers, and we can put their, their name in there. Uh, and the so you're the councillor, um, Ladbrook is the declaring councillor. Uh, their relationship to you. No, that's when you that's where councillor Ladbrook you say you're a committee member or whatever. Oh, committee member of the Rama Turf Club. Now, um, to club, but you're not an executive member, but not executive member. So uh, that falls within uh, the grey section of um, section B. So you're. <coughs> you're a, a member which is the fourth one from the bottom. You're a member of a, a community group, but not an executive member. So therefore, under the legislation, it's not declarable, okay. but, but you can opt to do that, make us, we can include an exemption there if you'd like. Um, yeah, it's just, your preference to leave the room as a voluntary measure. Yeah. You've taken that approach all the way along, haven't you? So, mm -hmm. from a legislative perspective, there is no requirement for you to do that, um, but that's up to each councillor. Okay, so that yeah. is that your preference? That's my preference. Yeah. So we will include the section of the legislation which says that you've complied with your responsibility, that it's not declarable, but you're electing to leave the room while the matter is discussed and voted on. Thank you, Councillor Labrook. Councillor Labrook leaving the room. Okay, Bassett Park Racehorse Trainers Agreement. Do I have a mover, please? I've got a question to you, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Councillor Berger. Yeah. So, so they are trainers, but do they own horses? As in, do they pay the revenue for the stall, or are they just training someone else's horses? So they get the stable fees. Mm -hmm. They pay the stable fees. And they okay. got the a lot of the trainers have there have trained a lot of other people's horses, so oh, okay. the trainer. So the trainers. And then the trainer, because he might have my horse in there one week and then you might have your horse in there the next week. So yep. 
comes from a trainer. Any other questions? So who was the move? We have a, oh. I'll move that Council one enter into a non ex, non exclusive racehorse trainer agreement to racehorse trainer agreements with trainers Colin Storch and William Hill for a period of three years for the use of the track and relevant facilities at Bassett Park to authorise the Chief Executive Officer or Delegate to finalise and execute the agreement and any other associated documentation. And we'll just preface that by that council for both one and two. Oh. Yep. Sorry. That's Councillor McMullen. I have a seconder, please. Councillor Taylor. Any opposition to the motion? Anyone wish to speak for or against the motion? I'll put it to the vote then. All those in favour? 7-0. Uh, Okay, we're all back. Um, um, no, just added two reports to the end, so that's just to update the down the top. <laughs> Item number 13.2, request for fee waiver, Bambergi Festival 2021. Do I have a mover, please? <coughs> Councillor Edwards. Uh, I'd like to move uh, that Council one uh, waive the fees associated with the hire uh, with the hire of Bassett Park facility for the Bambergee Festival. Uh, number two, allocate the costs associated with the hire of Bassett Park to the in-kind assistance major budget uh, GL two double eight seven dot two two four eight dot two zero zero one. And three, uh, consider further in kind and financial support for the festival uh, with specific details and costings to be discussed at a later date. Do I have a second to Councillor Burkett? Uh, is that a question? Yeah, Councillor Hancock, go for it. Uh, through you, uh, Deputy Chair, um, Chair Manager Ed, just wondering, um, and I'm sure that um, the officer's already doing this, but um, whether the officers are speaking to the Strat Aboriginal Corporation um, in respect for maybe a community grant, because they're open now, and so that might be a good option too for financial assistance going forward. So I just thought I'd remind that as a good, as a good option. <coughs> Anyone else? Uh, Councillor Taylor? Um, through you, Mr Chair. Um, Manager Ed, the other thing is the, the details and costings to be discussed at a later date. What sort of other costings? are going to be associated with it. Through you, Mr Mayor, um, they do ask the sponsors. Um, they have asked the sponsorship for the proposal. And they haven't asked council for it yet. However, they did say the Australian Academic Conference that they'd like to have to talk to council if they have that opportunity. Yeah. So, so they honestly don't know right no, now. No, okay. Thank you. Any more questions? Okay, then I'll put it to the vote. All yeah, those in favour? Sorry, could I just sorry. confirm um, the, the... That was yourself moving, Councillor McMullen. No, no, right. it was from Councillor Burke. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oops. <coughs> Mr. Chief, while the CEO's doing that, there, the, uh, any other uh, support requests would come back to council and let yeah. us know the yeah. report, please. So all those in favour? Zero. Item number 13.3, ALIA Online Storytime Pilot Project. Do I have a mover, please? Councillor Hancock? 
I move that Council 1 approves the participation of Maranoa Regional Council Libraries in the 2021 online story time pilot project at a cost of $1,320 for the 2021 calendar year. <coughs> Two, authorise the CEO to sign the online story time pilot agreement for 2021. Do I have a seconder, please? Councillor Ladbrook. Any opposition to the motion? Anyone wish to speak for or against the motion? No questions? I'll put it to the vote. All those in favour? 8-0. Thank you. Councillors, can you just make sure that your microphones are on a post-morning tea? And officers as well. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so the mover and seconder for that was Councillor Hancock. Hancock and Ladbrook. I think I got that right. You have to go back to me, Jack. And there was no changes? No, as, as per recommendation. And 8-0. Eight zero. Eight zero. Yeah, thank you. <coughs> uh, item number 13.4, request for in-kind assistance, Tulumbula Rodeo and Camp Draft. Can I have a mover, please, Councillor Burke? I'd like to move the council approve the request for in-kind assistance for the use of a water truck and generator and slashing the road leading in and out of the radio ground. Do I have a seconder, please? Councillor Taylor. Well, uh, yeah, I don't know when it's appropriate, Mr. Mayor, but I'd just right. like to move an amendment or, or Councillor O'Neill pull me up if I'm doing the wrong thing. <laughs> no. But, um, I just would like to ask the member if he would um, be inclined to add a dot point two. Um, that council be acknowledged in all forms of promotion for the event. Yeah, fair enough. So maybe, yeah. Um, move in the second of both of you that. <laughs> so the mover was Councillor Burkett. And Councillor Taylor was the seconder. <coughs> oh, could you say that again? Oh, sorry. Um, so you've got <coughs> the councillor up top. Be acknowledged in all forms of promotion for the event. Okay, anyone want to speak for or against? Oh, yes, right? thanks Mr Deputy Mayor. Uh, I just think it's uh, great that we can support an organisation like the Tula Radio and Camp Draft that pump a lot of money back into the, the right um, <coughs> forms like the Flying Doctors and the, and the local ambulance and Injun and Mitchell. Uh, it's a great uh, event for those that haven't been, I, I highly recommend going. So, um, yeah, it's great that Council can support that. Is anyone else happy? Okay. Yeah, sorry. Uh, just for Council's information, I think it'll be helpful. You've got a number of reports coming to you today uh, which involve in-kind support, and there's one there with sponsorship. You need to be aware that if you approve all the reports today, and you're likely, what we're recommending you do, you'll be out of in-kind budget, and sponsorship budget will be expended as well. However, having said that, I do I can find other monies for the things that turn up that we don't foresee. I just think you need to know that before you review these other reports. You'll notice in the reports that we've actually represented that with a table. Uh, we'll, every time we bring a meeting request to you for, for support, we'll provide you with who's had what for the year and how much is remaining in the budget. Probably the only point out there, just so further what Ed was just saying, confirming there that if we were to approve all the requests today, we actually have checked the budget. There is sufficient funds to cover all the requests. So Doesn't I would imagine lot. Director Rob and Manager Ed that once the bucket runs out, we'll be, we'll be told about it. And, you know, and you might come up with your um, where you can find more money, I suppose. That's exactly That's correct. Suggest. You'll and come to us. Case in point, uh, one of the, uh, it's the Bassett Park um, for the East Midland Country, the hire of a kitchen. We've had to transfer some money from somewhere else into the sponsorship bucket for enable to, for enable to you to approve it. So, yeah, that'll always come to you on a report showing you where the money's come from and what it's for. Thank you, everyone. No more questions. I'll put that one to the vote. All those in favour? Eight zero. <coughs> Item thirteen point five: requests from Easter in the country to use Roma sale yards for outback tucker under the stars and additional support for hire or of commercial kitchen. Councillor O'Neill, moving? I'll, I will move. I've just got a question okay. first for you, yeah. Chair. Um, so the point two to the manager, Ed, is uh, 10,285. 6,285, is that 
part of the 10,285? Uh, through you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, that's correct, Councillor O'Neill. Uh, in fact, um, there's about $4,000 remaining in the sponsorship budget. Transferring this amount makes up the 10000 And And so, thanks for that um, follow-up question then. On page 90, it says, currently Maranoa Regional Council has a budget allocation of $15,000 cash. So that 15 is going to them as budgeted? Yes. This is on top of that 15 to cover the kitchen? Through you, Mr Mayor. That's correct. OK. On that basis then, Chair, I'm happy to move that Council 1. I have a question. OK. Council Edwards. Um, through you, Deputy uh, Mayor. Um, Manager Ed, what's the situation out there with the current kitchen? Um, is that just not um, able to be used? Is that is that the situation out there? You definitely need this this separate. Through um, you, uh, item. Deputy Mayor. Yeah. Uh, Council uh, Tanya was here. She she. Oh, okay. uh, um, so the the Highway 54, Cafe 54 have a uh, sorry. sorry. There you go. Director Frank will be able to validate <laughs> this. Uh, the, the the kitchen over there is leased uh, for. Uh, to, to a private Man contract, Man managed, Man managed. Man uh, and uh, they have issues with okay. uh, allowing others to, sure. to use well, it. I so think first right, first right to um, sorry, council there, Sharon, you will correct me, but it's they do. And part of their agreement is that they, um, they they can have the option to catering for those ones if it's not actually theirs, yeah. uh, because they do store a lot of stuff in the coal room, and they just yeah. they have their weekly operations. It's uh, yeah. Yeah. had had that not been the case that the lease. Uh, stop this from occurring, would that have been able to be used to cater for this? Capacity. Ca yeah, just so in the no usual reason. sense. No, I, I can't Possibly answer that not. question, but I suspect yeah. you're, you're probably okay. correct. Yeah. I can answer that. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, if, if um, through the yeah. chair, if, if uh, <coughs> that kitchen out there can cater for uh, this size event, yes. Mm -hmm. I think okay. I just asked Director Sharon to, in that agreement, they have the right to sublet it if they want to, don't they? The Cafe 54, didn't we it's, make some? So it's not, well, not subletting. Well, I don't know how we how did we word, worded it. And it doesn't matter, but was, they can. Lease it? Yeah. Mm, I'd have to oh, check the it. agreement. There yeah, was no, a, a slight wording change. Yeah, just so that you give them the opportunity, if they wanted to let someone else use the kitchen. Yes. Yeah. So, so the long and the short of it is for the for the um, the newer councillors, um, uh, uh, Cafe Fifty Four who have the management agreement. If an event wants to use them, that's fine. Mm -hmm. If if an event out there the council agrees um, that can use the facility, if they choose not to use uh, the managed yeah. lease managed agreement in that facility, then they have to go outside. Uh, and um, and hence, this is why this reports to council. Uh, have a seconder for that. Moment. No, I haven't moved it yet. Oh, sorry. I thought so you I'll move that um, council one grant approval to Eastern the Country Committee to host Outback Tucker Under the Stars on Thursday, the first of April, twenty twenty one, at the Roma Sale Yards as part of the Roma's Easter in the Country Festival. To provide Eastern the Country Committee with an additional ten thousand two hundred and eighty five including GST for the hire of a commercial kitchen to be used at Tucker Under the Stars, and three, transfer 6,285 from work order 14482 2537 Tourism Budget Assistance to Regional Events to GL2887 2249 the sponsorship budget, to enable the additional financial support to be provided. Can I have a second, please? Councillor Taylor. <coughs> Any opposition to the motion? Anyone wish to speak for or against the motion? I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? Eight, eight zero. <coughs> Item 13.6, Felton Industries Voucher. Do I have a mover, please? Councillor Edwards. Uh, 
Uh, I move that Council 1 receive and note that it was successful in winning a $3,000 gift voucher as part of the 2020 Felton Industries photo competition. And 2 approve the addition of a one-off special grant category under the current round of the Community Grants and Non-Financial Assistance Program with, with the grant to provide community groups uh, with the opportunity to secure one of uh, two Felton Industries gift vouchers valued at $1,500 each. Do we have a seconder, please? Councillor Guthrie. I have a question. Go ahead, Councillor Hancock. Through you, Deputy Chair, to Manager Ed. Um, just, I have a couple of questions. Um, so, I'm just wondering, if we include this in our grants, in our grants, um, A, we're sort of saying we're going to put it in the current round of grants, but we've already put that out. It's already been advertised, so I'm just wondering whether um, it might be going into the next round of grants. That's number one. Do you want me to ask them all at once? <laughs> Can I just say a nanosecond before you spoke, I thought of that question myself. So, <laughs> um, look, I'd, I'd have to investigate that, but certainly if we couldn't make this round and it probably sounds like inappropriate, we'd look at the next one. Because they've already gone out, yeah. Okay, yep. my second question is um, just the thoughts, uh, uh, and and, that, and you would have to check the like, do they have a use by date on these vouchers as well to make sure not, we're not running out of time, that sort of stuff. Um, but my second question is, how are we going to advertise them, and what criteria are we going to be able to assess them by? Uh, that's a good question, Councillor Hancock. Uh, and look, the answer is yet to be determined. Um, yeah, so I, yeah, we, we haven't worked out the policy and how we'd handle that yet. Okay. So do we want to adjust the, amend the stop point two, or are we happy to go with it as it is? Well, I don't think it can go under the no. current. But I don't think I don't think it. Like they're already out, so okay. we'd ha you'd have to re we'd have to redo. Oh, you know, Could the grants, future forms, funding and rounds. Yeah. Council should probably just remove the word current round. So, uh, category under the community grants non official so, program. Sorry, councillors, I've just thought of another complexity is that this probably shouldn't really be a resolution in its own right. Could we update the policy and bring the policy back for re adoption that incorporates? Well, that's, that's my thought too. Um, sorry, through right. you, um, Chair, CEO, is but would you adopt a policy for a once off or would or would we do an ex, you know, would we do an expression of interest or what? I mean, I, I get putting it through here, but we, I think we, we do need, need to have a talk about that. Wh whatever we um, outlay has to be consistent with the policy, so it's really a policy issue that's okay. problematic. Um, could we update the policy for out of round examples such as this? We don't, we don't do out of round community grants, do we? Is that what you're not effectively trying to do here? No. Yes. Oh. If it's already been advertised, you're not doing... Community grants have been advertised, not okay. at this specific... So community, uh, normal community grants have been advertised. I would prefer to have done this as an out of a one-off yeah. outside of the community grants arrangement. Um, because there's no guarantee this this will happen again. Yeah, um, we'll yeah. change our whole policy for a one-off. So that's yeah. probably my point. It, is. It's still, it's just whatever we do has to be consistent with the policy. So is there sufficient breadth to yes. allow that to happen? What I'm hearing, if you alter the policy, it'll be there next time. We might have another one-off for 12 months, but. If the one-off comes could, up... Could we just lay it on the table till later in the meeting? I'll move that we lay this on the table till later in the meeting. Just to make sure... All those yeah. in favour? Eight zero. Yeah. Um, could I ask Manager Ed to go back to the policy and have a look to see whether it's sufficiently broad to allow us to do this? Sure. Um, because we might need to update... Yeah. Even if it's, like, something broad enough to capture... Yes. An example such as this. Uh, so who who laid that on the table? I didn't. Um, and sorry, I, I just note too, like, um, 
Is there another question that we need to include, though? No, no, but um, I'm just um, aware, too, that um, our local development officer who was handling our community grants is away. Um, but so um, last time we were sitting in, Councillor Mo and I, um, Fiona Vincent was also in there as well. So to know about that policy as well, Manager. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. The other, if we're bringing, are we laying it on till later in the meeting? Or? Yeah. The other question that I've got too, if um, if it can come back, is since it was, I think, something that came out of the um, uh, netball courts, is that correct, when we purchased That's that? That's correct. Um, is there an opportunity for some more of that seating to go uh, directly to for the netball netballers? Um, no. And I don't know whether it would ever get any seating, but... Um, oh, I just want you to... I think Cameron, uh, or Deputy Director Cameron, you, you were in, instrumental with that seating, weren't you? Uh, through you, Mr Mayor. Essentially, this, this, uh, this um, competition came up. We had some photos that uh, we put in for the netball courts because yep. it was felt and equipment we bought for the netball courts mm -hmm. and, and were successful. So to answer your question, $3,000 would go quite some way <coughs> to buy another set of grandstands for the netball courts specifically, if that's what council were interested in, but that would be a single site. To be quite honest, we thought this might have been an opportunity to, to, to look at, but if there is some complexities around policy, <coughs> There's probably 20 projects in the current capital works program that could spend this voucher tomorrow. If oh, we, well if that, we, that would be. If we had to, but it was just looked at as an opportunity as, th is there a chance to support us, community group? Um, but there's there's projects in the budget right now that, that, that could spend it, but yeah. that's... But well, just, just when we come back to it, my question is, is there any need for any extra seating would it benefit uh, netball, and that's all I'd really like to know. If, um, like, for instance, when you did the seating, did you do two courts but not three courts or something like that with that seating? You know what I mean? So yeah. So it was just a, the grandstand and, and twelve single seats. Um, I, we, we would just have to liaise with. Um, yeah. To find out if there was any where there's a push for um, more seating out there. Yeah, so. because it's the same stuff and all the same company. Yeah. Director Cam, could for argument's sake you said about other community groups, um, if that went, could that be shared between say all the different towns? Say at each showground they get given a bench, a couple of benches, or a sporting group or something like that. Or is it got to be solely on one area, or can it be spread across a bit? No, so the recommendation that was drafted was obviously there's a three thousand dollar voucher was split it. We've talked to Felton about it. Split it two ways to get two fifteen hundred dollar vouchers for for community groups yeah. if you start trying to put it one in each region um to, to be quite honest you'll dilute the value that yeah. much that you won't be able to probably buy you might be able to buy one seat it's yeah, no, it, right. yeah. councillor hancock yeah through you mr mayor um the other idea that's been thrown around in communities for a long time but it might not be enough money um is portable grandstands yeah. That could, that, mm. that could be shared um, around around the region. That that's been thrown around the community for a, for a long time. So Felton provide portable grandstands. Again, that would go that would go a fair way to probably purchasing one <coughs> a portable grandstand. I think from Felton's about seven seven and a half. So um, it's expensive equipment. Um, sorry, I shouldn't mm. say that. It's it's not expensive equipment. It's just it, it, when you look at the the dollars of what what it's worth. Yeah. It's, um, it does add up. So that would be a way without going through a whole lot of mm -hmm. complexity of just getting a benefit for an asset that could be shared yeah, regionally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, as I said, we instead of just consuming it into the capital works program, we thought there's mm -hmm. there's something better we can do with this three thousand and it just disappear. But but that that could be an, an option. But could that be looked into as well? Well, when it comes back, it's a portable grand mm -hmm. option. Okay, no, no other questions on that one. We'll move on. 13.8. Uh, 13.7, uh, page 203. <coughs> sorry. 203.
Uh, seat um, 13.7, page 203, request for Bassett Park fee waiver. Uh, do we have a mover, Councillor O'Neill? I'll move that one, uh, Council waive the fees associated with the hire of Bassett Park car park and marquee in the event of wet weather for the charitable event, Farmers Community Connect to be held on Thursday, the 15th of April, 2021. Assist Rapid Relief Team with setting up and packing down tables and chairs for the event. Three, allocate the costs associated with the hire of Bassett Park uh, and set up pack down assistance in to the in-kind assistance minor budget GL2887224620001. <coughs> and four, request that council is acknowledged in all forms of promotion leading up to and during the event. We have a seconder. Councillor Hancock, any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak? We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? 9 0. Item 13.8, page 220. Request for in June State School. Oh. Yeah, please go ahead. I got it. I will declare a conflict. Um, Righto. Confirm that the previous one was non or wasn't it? Nine zero, yep. Nine zero, sorry. Yep. Okay, I'll be with you in a sec, Councillor McMullen. All right, so the declaring councillor. I'm just uh, on the, um, because I blacked out CEO, so maybe I don't have to. My stepdaughter, stepchild, is teacher at the school. I, I have a feeling that that's for a student, but it, in this particular case, it's the. Oh, okay. Yeah. The teacher, isn't it? See on the yeah. same to. Yeah. My wife works there as well, so we're both it's the same thing. All right, just bear with me. Oh, you mind a bit more? I don't know. Follow the line though, Councillor McMullen. It's orange to orange. Where is that, sorry? Yeah. Well, your child. child. If you say and child. then it's a contract with council. The supply of goods or services to council, the lease or sale of assets. So the, the entity though that's receiving the benefit is the school, isn't it? Mm. Nothing to do with the count, yeah. So the exemption, um, so the, uh, the exemption for want of a better word, that's not the exact, but what is not declarable is the councillor or a related party of the councillor has an interest in an educational facility or provider of a childcare service as a student or former student or a parent or grandparent of a student of the facility or service, um, so it's not nothing. The, the nothing. It's, no children. That doesn't yeah, count. Yeah. So the, the the matter is about the in June State School. Mm. So the is that an interest in an entity? That one to in, in June um, State School is the entity. And then the relationship to you is that the child of your spouse 
So it's step, yeah, yeah. step, step child. Yeah. Yeah. So the child um, of your spouse um, is a teacher at, at, the at the school. Indian school. Yeah. Uh, so we. I guess probably should. Whilst the letter signed by the principal, the principal's gone again. With she's actually acting principal at the moment, even though he signed it. He broke his foot or his leg or something, so he's, he's on leave. Again, so. Yeah, is a teacher at the school he's and and is also currently acting principal acting at the moment, principal, I mean. and is also. He signed the letter, but I just thought about his um, acting principal. That's a really good point. Yeah. Um, the um, applicant for agenda item 13.8 and how would you be dealing with the matter well, um, Councillor McMullen I will declare a conflict I do not wish to I wish to participate in discussion and decision making other council I just read what you got here well I just yeah, so uh, the, I wish to participate yeah. in uh, discussion and uh, decision making. Um, and other councillors will have to vote on whether I stay or go. Uh, other councillors um, will vote. Vote on that and uh, any uh, conditions. All right, do we want to deal? So do we have anyone to move on that? Can I just ask a question? Because we're all still right. navigating this, right? Yeah. So Councillor McMullen's child is a close associate. And Sorry. Um, so if we go to... Um, child. Child, so child of my spouse. Black. Which oh, is... Oh, I see. Yeah, that's right. yeah, this is where we've got tangled up mm. in the past. That's a related party, so purple is declarable, but it's not deemed to be a close associate. Oh, that makes sense then, yep. Yeah. And, and, and you need two of the same colour for it to be prescribed. Oh, I see what you mean, yes. Yeah, so yep. okay. Need, we would need two oranges, not to get confused with Councillor <laughs> Edwards. Two oranges, <laughs> like, signs, two oranges <laughs> make a lemon. Yeah. Yeah, we would need to, to to have to trigger the prescribed conflict of interest one. Okay, do we have anyone to move on that? Does that make sense, Councillor? It does, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Councillor Guthrie. I'm happy to move that it's in the public interest that Councillor McMullen... Slowly, Councillor <laughs> Guthrie, please. That it is in the public interest. It is in the public interest, yeah. That Councillor McMullen participates and votes on agenda item 13.8. Yes. Because a reasonable person would trust that the decision is made in the public interest. And can I, can I ask just a follow-up question? Sure. So not, not discounting what you've just shared, but does one supersede the other? If the matter is um, the injury in state school, there is a box that says employer, mine or a close associate's employer. And it's the employer who has written to council. But the close associate, the, the child of the spouse is not a close associate. Is that right? Is the principal the employer though? Isn't the government the employer? Yeah, the school's the employer. The school's the employer. Yeah, so if we go back to um, the close definition of a close associate, and this is where we've got tangled up in the past as well. So close associate is with prescribed and related party is um, declarable. 
So if we just go back to prescribe, a close associate is only um, a spouse, a parent, child or sibling. So when you go to a related party, the a parent, child or sibling of the counsellor's spouse is a related party, it's not a close associate. So it, are you looking at the legislation at the moment, Councillor O'Neill? Oh, I'm looking at the, the cheat sheet that the government's given us. Yes, yeah, so a related party is Section 150 EP and a child, a parent, child or sibling of the counsellor's spouse and that's definitely the case with mm. Councillor McMullen. Yeah. No question about that. Um, so it doesn't... It's not Councillor McMullen's employer and it's not a close associate's employer. And just a question two through you, Mr Mayor. I might be reading it wrong, but you'd have to have two orange things to be... Yeah, so when, when we go into the close associate, a, close, a person is a close associate of a counsellor if the person is any of the following in relation to the counsellor. A spouse? No. A parent, child or sibling? No. I want them, yeah. one, one orange box doesn't throw you out anyway, that puts you out. Of You've got A and B. Yeah, so we, that, if we do the who first, okay. so it's not it's not a direct benefit to you and it's not a direct benefit to your child because it's your spouse's child. So the only ones that get called up as a close associate is a spouse, a parent, child or sibling, a partner in a partnership, an employer other than a government entity, an entity other than... Uh, a government entity for which the councillor is an executive officer or board member or, or a listed um, um, company and shares associated with that. So the, the child of a spouse doesn't come in until it's a declarable conflict of interest and that's a related party. Um, so related party, which is the... Mm. Purple, um, and you can see that the the a child of the councillor's spouse is in the purple. So that becomes mm. declare. Yeah. That's we're on notice that it's potentially declarable. Uh, and then we need to go to what it relates to, uh, and it's an application. So that they've written to council seeking permission to bail mm. grass. So you, at the broadest, it's an application seeking approval or permission from council. Yep. So in theory, mm. that uh, could be brought up as an orange, but because it's not mm. your child, I was just questioning. it's not two oranges. Oh, no, that makes sense now. But no. when we flick yeah. the council a Ladbrook, it's different. it'll be a prescribed. Yeah. It's a different story altogether. Yeah, yeah. Jeez, it's difficult to navigate, isn't it? No, just so, one. Julie, through you, Mr Mayor. Um, so when these come into action, we'll just... They're just tick and flick. Yes. And just give them to you. Exactly right. I'm trying to make it as easy as possible for us. You only have to actually tick the box and, the, and depending on what box you tick... And then just um, leave the room... Well, we'll have to declare it at the meeting, but we'll, it'll just be so much easier for everyone because you won't have to be um, trying to interpret the legislation on the fly. So, Mr. Mayor, um, are we comfortable that it's a related mm, party, yeah, not makes a, sense, a yeah. close associate? Yeah. yeah. Councillor Edwards? I was just going to suggest, is it worthwhile just going through mine at the moment or do we have to do it when my conflicts come up? Just so we're, you know, at the moment, we're all sort of all trying to get, it, get across all this at the moment. Is it possible um, to do that or not? 
could we just you're not you don't have anything in June State got, School, do you? No, I've got two coming up, but I'm just saying. Yeah, how about we we apply it just progressively? Uh, so we threw an orange out into the <laughs> vast area that's going to get nailed up if you like. Mm. It's pretty hard to get get your head around this. That's all. Um, so long as the sea has got her head around it, we're right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think we're getting better every meeting. That's so mm. that's. It's Couldn't good. have got much worse. Yeah, this is, what you've done here is very clear now, like, yeah. to run through it. Yeah. it good job. Um, you just got to keep There's a fair bit of thought mm. that's mm. trying to, to make it as easy as possible. Mm. Okay. okay, so in this particular... If we apply that then to... Um, Sorry, can I... Um, we got to the point where mm -hmm. I, I interrupted a vote that the mayor... Or a resolution the mayor was taking from Councillor Guthrie. So you right for us to do that vote, CEO? Or have you got to type it up? I've, I've typed just uh, only two more seconds. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Just let us know when we're We've got a conflict next meeting. We just get some of these. Yeah. Some okay, of these so Councillor Guthrie moved. Fill them out. Yep. And who seconded, sorry? I don't think we had a second. Councillor Daly, you're happy Alan. to yep. second? <laughs> Any opposition? And um, we'll just, so that you can see what council. What is the one page? Yeah. Can you make it all up there? <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> just like magic. Um, so the item is that. Um, oh, I didn't just go over the top of. We haven't got the motion. In there. It's in capitals, but we're not shouting. <laughs> I'll sort that later. Okay, thank okay. you. Mover and a second are happy with what's up on the screen. Mm -hmm. Any opposition? We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? 8 0. Can we have one more? I think uh, Councillor Ladbrook. I have one too, Mr. Mayor. Okay, sure. <coughs> so the declaring councillor is Councillor Ladbrook. And the uh, interest. so the same thing will apply. The entity is in June State School. Yeah. And the uh, box. My spouse. I said you're right. Spouse. Yeah. Is, is the yeah. employer of employee. Or? So, so I think it's yeah. um, the 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 report is about in June. This is uh, I think where we're getting pickled as well in a pickle um, is that the entity that's written to council is in June State School. Yes. Um, which is so on the this form, employer of your spouse. Yes. So if we fill these forms out, where do you put that? Um, it says employer, say, mine or close associates, employer. Yeah. So that would be that box. Tick that box. And oh, then yeah. where, where it's an entity, the entity would be in June um, state school, and then when we describe what is the personal interest, um, if it's um, an entity, then we have to then say um, It's definitely two oranges, I would say, because... Yeah, I think it's more or less... Yeah, because it's a, a, a pro or consideration of another matter involving an application or written submission. I think Councillor Ladbrook had already made that decision he was going to go anyway. Yeah, so I, I would of interest. go employer yeah. and then the, the last in the orange. Yep, and um, prescribed conflict of interest yeah, so and that I have makes no it choice. Prescribed. Um, and then you've got no choice but to leave the room while the matter is discussed and voted on. Mm -hmm. So 
just saying that out loud so there's a proper yeah. de the declaration. Uh, the, um, <laughs> the matter, the entity is Injun State School. Mm -hmm. The relationship to you is that that is the employer of your spouse, Councillor Ludwell. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's pertaining to a. Um, application before council. Yeah, uh, is um, written submission. Application to council. Um, and involves a written submission. Two ticks, please. For agenda item 13.8. And and because it's a prescribed conflict of interest, you have no choice and you leave the room while the matter is discussed and voted on. Yep, so can we read I counsel that book? I, I counsel so that. If you're happy with. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because there's not that in there, if you were to write it out before. You know, like to put the, um, you know, my wife or the Indian school. You put it in here. Your yes. name. So really, when, when we get, if everyone's happy with this and we don't find anything that we want to mm -hmm. um, improve on for the next meeting, the only thing you need to then read out is what's in the box. So the. It's my interest. I, I'm the declaring councillor. Mm -hmm. um, who, who is it about in June? Uh, state school. The relationship you, so category no. is uh, employer my, of my spouse. So it would be in June state school. So At the top there, no, what no, is? No. you just got to basically read that out for your agenda, that part. Oh, yeah. You know, re request for mailing, whatever it is, in June state school. Yeah. Are they, and they have an application to council that involves a written submission for agenda item 13.8. And then just a bit at the bottom. Yeah, and because it relates to a licence permit registration or approval or consideration of another matter um, involving an application or a written submission, then you will leave the room while the matter is discussed and voted on. Thank you. <laughs> Do you want me to say that? <laughs> Council, are you happy? That I think it's clear. It's yeah. very clear. I think it's mm. clear. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, okay. Councillor Hancock. Um, can I also That's suggest that name. we have a no, we have a bit of a get together that. and a briefing outside of council meetings to maybe go through it, run through it, because this yeah. is we're, we're doing. I've, councillors, I've also um, in between last meeting and this meeting, I've I've written a training module that goes mm -hmm. with this form. Um, and it, it explains the why we do this, not just to follow the legislation, but the intent behind the legislation. So it's only three pages, it's very brief, um, and the f I've put the form together to go with that training module, and so we can run through that at the next opportunity. I, I just think it would be good to do it outside the meeting, we can be throwing all our little things together and come up with something. But yeah, yeah. but I just thought if we could give today a bit of a road test and then once we've nailed it, then that can be laminated, as Councillor Guthrie said. Already we've had a suggestion that maybe the the, pub, the, the motion about whether they participate or not um, will put on the back of the form. Councillor and Hancock. Space for the agenda item description as yeah, well. Yeah. Yep. So we can just go through it. Yes. You know, and write all that there, and it's all just in front of you. Correct, yeah. And simple. And there's no second guessing whether it's prescribed or declared. Yep. Um, it's and just the, whether it's two of the same colour. Yep. And all that stuff. And just It'll be so much easier for you. Yep. Councillor Hancock. Sure. I'm just, I'll wait on the questions, Mr Mayor. Yeah. Oh, about the actual item? Yep. Is that okay. my conflict? Uh, we so did. Who? So, Councillor Ladbrook. Sorry. And this is matter <coughs> relationship category 
is employer of close associate um, being the spouse. And it involves an application to council and and a written submission, so that's prescribed. And leave the room while the matter Perfect. Thank you, Councillor Hancock. Okay. Mm -hmm. So declaring Councillor. Councillor Hancock. Yeah. I just wanted to note that um, it is my child. So what, what's the relationship to Injun State School? Uh, it's, the relationship is to the Stock Route Network. Ah, okay. So I've had a go at ticking the boxes. Okay. So the relationship category is child. Category child, yep. Yeah. Um, the what? The what is, well, Julie, there's nowhere here where, where, where do we get to say what what it is about? Like there's, like there's a box here For that I'm ticking, which is the potential gain, benefit or loss for me or my close association is no greater than the benefit or loss of a significant proportion of persons in the local government area stands to gain or lose. But I need to explain, I need to be able to explain what. And I'm happy to do that. So, so your child hasn't put in a submission though so my, about the matter? So, so my child um, has previously drove cattle on the um, Maranoa stock routes but has never drove cattle um, in the Injune area in the in-June stock route that we're discussing. Yeah, so there's one here that says the potential gain, benefit or loss for you or your close associate related party donor is no greater than the benefit or loss that a significant portion of person persons in the local government area stands to gain. So that's the one I've ticked. But you need, when we're thinking about this form, we have to be able to explain, like give council some idea about what it is, but the that's what I've ticked, but the context of it. Mm -hmm. And so on that basis. Like if that, that's considered an ordinary, if it's in the green, it's an ordinary business matter, which doesn't trigger um, a personal interest. You can make a voluntary declaration if you like, but if it is a voluntary declaration, then it, it's treated as declarable. I'm going to declare it, put it to council. Yeah, so you're you're doing a voluntary declaration for a um, ordinary business matter. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a question? So Unless it's to oh, do with mine. Sorry, it is to do with yours. Good. <laughs> <laughs> so the potential gain benefit, um, so your child, would they have a, so you're saying, well, by ticking that box, by being on the stock group, they've got no greater benefit or loss than anyone else in the district. Who might put or in, in the, the Maranoa? Who district. might put in an application to to mm. drive to drive on the drive on the stock routes or mm. permit to occupy on the stock route? Or so I'm thinking that it might be completely different mm. if there had been a someone had put in an application, and Councillor Hancock's son had yeah. written to council yeah. and mm. said. Um, just, this is hypothetically playing it out, that if, if, if Councillor Hancock's son had said, no, I request that council don't do that because it will impact my business in this particular way, if he would have put a written submission in <coughs> about that matter, um, then it would be 
um, Councillor Hancock's child, which is in the orange, and it would be a written submission to council in the orange as well. So two oranges prescribed Councillor Hancock would need to, to go. Mm -hmm. But in this particular case, um, yes, it's the orange at the top. He's not applied, he's not provided a written submission and he's, he's not, not, not actually he's ever not, used. And he's not driving at the moment or anything, he's not out there, so. Uh, um, yeah, I don't think it's at, at the moment that's the issue, it's about potential. Yes. So yes. If, if, even if, has he ever or will he in the future? Bit like me with the orange yeah, yeah. Sorry. Well, I, I don't know. That's why I'm saying that he has he has drove cattle in the Maranoa on the stock routes in the past. Yeah, he may put in the future that that he may. Yeah. Um, but he's not. He has not in this area of the Maranoa. Yeah. So the potential gain or benefit or loss is no different to anyone else who would use the stock route um, within the region. So we'll go, so voluntary declaration. Mm -hmm. So in theory, if we're sitting at home and, and, and Jo read this, Councillor Hancock read this, and got to the point where she ticked that last green box, she could, in all good conscience, go, I've adhered to the Act, right? Correct. But then if you wanted to be cautious, which is your right, yep. you then go, no, I'm going to tick the purple, which yes. then triggers it to come to council. Exactly yep. right. And that's yep. exactly what my form yep. says. Okay. So it's working. Yeah. So you so. tick the green box on the left first. And then I tick the purple and then, box. And then which tells you without having to look anywhere that it's an ordinary business matter, uh, so an, not a personal interest, but can make a voluntary declaration. And then, yes, you tick the right. Okay. And to Councillor Hancock's point, CEO, when you get to the point where you are ticking a purple box, yeah. you then should have um, the right to explain that to council because they're ultimately going to have to make a decision when they get down to the bottom anyway. Yeah. Yeah, and, maybe a little box there. Yeah, and then we've got the space for the name that to, put a to, bit of to mention your na the, the, the name and, and there's a space for other or describe. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so do you want me to say the how? Yes, thanks. Oh, no, so just say the, the what. Yes. I said the what. Um, which is the... Potential gain, benefit or loss for me or my close associate related party is no greater than the benefit of loss that a significant proportion of persons in the local government area stands to gain or lose. Yep. However... However... I wish to participate in discussions. No, no, it would be however my son runs a... Uh, a, a business oh, that sorry, could right use on. the right. stock yeah. routes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. However, my son has drove cattle throughout the Maranoa stock routes um, previously and may do in the future. Um, and so... I make a voluntary declaration. I make a voluntary declaration. So my, my son uses <coughs> stock <coughs> routes within <coughs> the Maranoa region. So make a voluntary declaration and participate in discussions. So I've made a, a voluntary declaration, so um, I wish to participate in discussion and decision making. And so other councils will vote on whether I stay or go. I wish to participate in discussion and decision making. And other councillors will vote on. I might change that. We'll vote on that um, and any conditions. This could be a good revenue raising exercise for council CEO if you were to market uh, this form to the other 76 councils. Okay. So, do we want to vote on that? Need a resolution. Oh, sorry. 
Please go ahead. Mayor, I'll move that uh, it is in the public interest, interest that Councillor Hancock participates and votes on agenda item 13.8. 13. 13. Sorry, Councillor oh. O'Neill, just bear with me for Sorry. a minute and I'll put it straight in. Uh, I move that it is in the public interest that Councillor Hancock participates. Hmm. Participates and votes on agenda item 13.8. as a reasonable person would trust that the final decision is made in the public interest. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll have to move, but just one question. Second. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, not, with this, is there any chance that like, you can have that on there, so you don't have to type. You could just do the tick and flick on the box as well. Is that can't do that? Can you do that to uh, save you typing up each individual each time? Well, truth be told, though, Mayor, it's our responsibility as elected representatives yeah. to provide this to the CEO yeah. prior to the meeting, yeah. unless something comes up at and the meeting. You, you, yeah, I'm and just thinking it's saving. So what what we've done. Uh, we, we did a first version, but I, I scrapped the first draft and went to a second draft. We're going to have this at a, as an editable form. So it, the, the legislation now requires that as soon as you identify the interest, um, that you notify um, the CEO. That's, that's not a Maranoa issue, that's a legislative one. And so I want to make it as easy as possible for you to do that. And this will be an editable form. So all you have to do then is just click the box. Yep. That will come through. We can pre-populate the minutes at, based on that notification. So there, it should be very rare that something is identified for the first time in a meeting that, that would say that you haven't read the agenda because the, the notification needs to happen as soon as you pick it up. Yep. And so the, it, late. The, the late. The late is, is the only exception, yep. yep. So um, during the week in that, yeah. we'll have plenty You'll of have these. You'll have one of those and then you can just email that through to me. Yeah. Your job is done. We can pre-populate the minutes and then it will get really fast then because we'll have it all ready to go. Yeah. Good. So when will these be ready? Um, after the pilot today, we'll make it available within so the next couple of days. So you'll just change a few of those? Yeah, we'll just to tweak what we didn't quite work. Yeah. Sorry? You'll be able to do it on your iPad. Sorry? Yeah, yep. be able to do it on the iPad. Okay. Yep. And it'll just speed the meeting up <laughs> in a Mayor, big I way. I think Councillor Burke had seconded that. Yeah, well, and I was, I was ready to move the actual motion. I was jumping ahead. But yeah, I'm happy to second. Right, uh, does anyone want to speak for the motion, against the motion? We'll go to the vote. All those in favour? 8 0. Okay, moving on to the. We haven't done it yet. Yeah, oh. I'm happy to move. To, uh, <laughs> Hang on. Ladbrook needs to leave. Well, he's got to pack his bags. And then maybe Officer Kent will get to talk soon. Item <laughs> okay, 13.8 request for in June State School bailing of hay on reserve. Please go ahead. I'm happy. To, I haven't got any questions for you, Ken, but someone might have. Might have. Um, I move the Council 1. Consent to the bailing of excess pasture on the Indian Reserve by the Indian State School for the purposes of Section 182 of the Stock Rate Management Act 2002. To advise the bale grass must be used as feed cattle used in the Indian State School Cattle Club only. Three, advise Indian State School Cattle Club that a representative is to liaise with Council's Rural Land Services and Funding Team Coordinator regarding the timing and area of land to be harvested for hay baling purposes. 
four advised injury in state school that all harvested hay is to be used at the school only to eliminate the cartage and spread of the pest plant seed. Five, request that injury in state school undertake ongoing record pasture monitoring of proposed hay harvesting site to determine the quality and quantity of pasture available. We have a second of Councillor Edwards and any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak to it? I just have a question. Uh, right through you, Mr Mayor, to Officer Kent. Just out of interest, and you might not know which is why it's not in the report, but how much area uh, in that? I, I see the, the picture, but... Uh, through you, Mr Mayor, it's, it's a little bit variable in the area they actually want to do because they're probably after a set number of bales of hay, which is really going to be dictated on how good the pasture growth is, but we're only talking, the reality is, a, a, a small number of hectares, not a lot, not a large area. Um, it's a, an area that has been problematic before with fire, which is why we're pretty keen to say this is a really good solution, good solution. to a yeah. number of issues that are faced by the Indian community. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Okay, we're going to go to the vote. If no one else wishes to speak, all those in favour, 8-0. It's more the timing. What is it? Just Are we happy for twelve twenty and then returning at twelve twenty one? It is twelve twenty now. So Councillor Labrook left. Oh. 12, 18, 45 seconds, actually. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> faster. Left the meeting at 12... That one. 18. 18. 18. 17. 17. And returned to the meeting at... 12, 20. Item 13.16, page 229. 13.9, request to host Opera Queensland 2021 tour. Are you lonesome tonight? Uh, Councillor O'Neill. I'll move the Council 1 accept the, accept the proposal from Opera Queensland to perform AU Lonesome tonight at the Roma Sayards Bull Ring on Thursday the 3rd of June 2021. Mm -hmm. Two, allocate funds from the Regional Arts Development Fund, RADF Budget, GL2885-22502001 of up to $6,000. Three, provide the Roma Sayards Bull Ring as the stage for the opera and the use of the multi-purpose meeting room by performers. Four, ensure that all attendees have completed the Roma Sayards entrance warning and indemnity form prior to entrance of the Sayards. Five, agree to the proposed ticket pricing of $45 per adult and $30 for under 18. Six, authorise the CEO to sign the agreement on behalf of Maranoa Regional Council. Uh, I'd like to lay this on the table to later in the meeting um, to get information about do we have any funding in the budget to do that? all the handrails out there? And also, if there is an opportunity uh, to have reduced pricing for the um, ticket prices for seniors' tickets and children's tickets. Uh, all those in... Oh, wait, I was just going to uh, raise... Them. I was going to raise it anyway, Mr Mayor, if it sure. went to the vote, but I had one of the volunteers ask me the other day the similar question. Will the rails be in place before this? Because um, mm. it'd be predominantly elderly people. That was one All of right, So we'll get that information back if All this right. is successful. I've just got a question too. Um, in relation to the actual, um, you know, seating arrangements. So where would el elderly people sit who can't so make it up and down those yeah. stairs? That's all I'm wondering. I think the left hand side. Is it? Uh, there is grass. Oh, yeah. Up the back, yeah. up the back the there. Would that be the appropriate, like where you come in off the landing and just straight onto that concrete area? Would that be set up uh, for that? I'm wondering. Sorry. Well, could I pass that over? 
Any other questions that councillors would like to know? And we'll put this to the vote where it can lay on the table to later in the meeting for that information. All those in favour? Nine zero. Okay, uh, moving on. Next page number, please. 238. 238, thank you. 13.10, request for sponsorship of the Mercy Shield. Do we have a mover? Councillor McMullen. Mr Mayor, I'll move that Council, one, approve the request to sponsor the Mercy Shield Carnival by way of payment to print the official event program, two, transfer funding of $1,750 from Sports and Recreation Materials and Services Budget GL2884.2001.2001 to the Sponsorship Budget. Three, organisers to acknowledge Council contribution in all advertising for this event and during the Carnival. The seconder there, Council Ladbrook. Just uh, to the mover, would the mover um, have any appetite to put in there that flexibility that if other schools want to camp that we approve it now um, as part of the resolution. Mm -hmm. What was that? Additional. So if any other schools wish to um, camp oh, okay. so it doesn't have to come back to council. Yeah, I don't have a problem with that. Well, wouldn't that would we have to adopt we'd have to change the policy for that wouldn't we, Mr Mayor? Well, like not if it's in the not not if it's in the resolution no, that it's a, can I just get clarity, Mr Mayor? So what I'm saying is this is the second school I think that's come to us to um, uh, camp there or because uh, we've had this report before. Is that correct? Or is it the first one? No. Yeah. But what did we have last year? Did we have any of them camp? I think we call some camps back there. Yeah. So what I'm, what I'm saying is if there's another school that... Mm -hmm. Um, that does want to camp, then we've approved that um, now. That now. That, that has, uh, Councillor Hancock is exactly right. There needs to be a policy on that because that's that becomes Council's policy position to allow, and then officers then comply with the, the policy. The, uh, this Remember is, that one event. Yeah, just, for, just for the one event, so if we approve it for one, that we. If we say, for instance, um, I, I don't think it needs to be a policy for one event. Sorry, I'm confused yeah, what, you're, what say, you're asking, Mr. Mr. Mayor. What, what I was going to say, uh, CEO, there's one, two, three, four, five, six schools nominated to come. Yeah. The Mayor's saying, in case an additional school puts their hand up or something. And they want to camp. Oh, for this particular Just for this carnival. It was sounding very much like. Oh, yeah, sorry, I was confused yeah. too. I was yeah, yeah. that's not the way I talked about it. this report for Mercy yeah. Shield. Why yes. can we go between the Brisbane and Rainer schools? Yeah. So, okay, if that, someone else put their hand up, they'd have to come back to council. Yeah. 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 Okay, so can we then just. Um, well, why don't you just do. All schools involved yeah. in this. Yeah. Well, we're, all we're doing is saying that the Mercy Shield, so it's whoever's involved in that. So, it's covering them anyway. No, we've got a budget amount there for a certain amount of people to come. So this would be saying that it does need to come back to council that we've approved. I think no, it's only for advertising. It's only for advertising. It's not it's not it's where the camping, camping is There's no camping from. in this. That's why. We're just, we're just doing the printing. printing. Oh, right. Okay. But have we uh, allowed the camping? Yeah. Yeah. Please, Mayor, yeah, this is about um, a school attending the Mercy Shield using Bassett Park for camping. And on Friday, uh, I circulated an advance warning of a potential amendment to the 
re resolution to include the approved request to sponsor Mercy Shield by way of payment of print and official event program and waive camping fees at Bassett Park. Yeah, that's right. That's mm. good. So, so I, at the so moment, that's not in there. Um, no, that's, in the that's re draft resolution, so waive. Um, yeah, Saturday mm. morning. Yeah, I saw it somewhere. The amended recommendation, yeah. Yeah, but it's just camping fees for whoever's coming to the Mercy Shield. It's not individual yeah, it's schools. Not, it's no. not in here, but so and then yeah, it's for one school programs. at this stage. Yeah, but the amendments, the other about camping. Yeah, so I was right that it that's what we're talking about. And what I'm saying, instead of just being one school, it might be multiple schools. So we give them the flexibility that we've allowed for that fee waiver for whoever comes to the Mercy Shield to. Do it, and that's, well, that's what I was asking the mover and the seconder that's whether what's they. What's in the amended recommendation? Mr. Mayor, in fairness to council, yeah, right the right original no. report doesn't say anything about <laughs> there camping. Was, there was nothing no in the camping report. In the report, that's right. Before and there was, council, and there was nothing in the minutes um, or the the draft resolution. So that's why we were all confused. Hence, but, but hence the council email was get the email last Friday. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe we haven't read the email since Friday. Perhaps. No, no, as in the move, what had been moved didn't include no, anything no, true, about but, that. But I did read the email, so. Oh, well, I've read the email since Friday. Okay. So. so. I'm happy with that. And is the mover happy with that? So Deputy Mayor? The amount is wrong. Yeah, just got to transfer. Yes, 26.50. Yeah. yeah, Mr. Mayor, I'm happy with the change. So uh, the mover is um, Councillor <coughs> McMullen. Yeah. And the seconder was Councillor Ladbrook. Councillor Ladbrook, correct. McMullen, Councillor Ladbrook. Mm. Okay, so the Council 1 approved the request to sponsor the Mercy Shield Carnival by way of payment to print the official event program and waive camping fees at Bassett Park for the event. And point two then becomes transfer funding of 2650 from uh, as read. Okay. So that's matter you're ready to go, CEO. And yeah, we just need to put the council in the front of those. <coughs> okay, thank you, Mr. May. Right, eh? Uh, would the move wish to speak to the motion? No, no thank you. Right, eh? Does uh, anyone wants to speak against the motion? Does anyone wish to speak? I certainly will. Uh, what a fantastic event and um, <clears throat> for everyone's benefit um, that was involved with this last year, uh, this was sort of one event that actually happened in a very much a COVID year. Sadly, one of the schools that were coming um, had uh, an issue with COVID at the school and everyone had to quarantine. So that uh, would have been extremely disappointing for the uh, students uh, not to come to this competition in a year when there was very little um, uh, sport being played at a representative level. So, um, so this was born. It was very successful. Um, our local sporting groups have got behind and um, supported the school putting this endeavour on. And um, this year it looks like all systems go and... Uh, I think it's fantastic if Council can support this initiative as they did last year. Okay, we'll go to the vote. All those in favour? 9-0. Okay, item 13.11, Maranoa Employment Expo. Do we have... Um, any questions or do we have a mover? Councillor O'Neill. 
I'll move that Council 1 waive the fees associated with the hire of Bassett Park facility for the Maranoa Employment Expo to be held on Wednesday the 19th of May 2021. 2 assist with setting up and packing up, packing down tables and chairs for the event. 3 request Council to be a gold sponsor for the event and host an interactive and engaging exhibition at the Maranoa Employment Expo. 4 allocate the costs associated with the hire of Bassett Park and set up pack down assistance to the in-kind assistance major budget GL2887 2248 and 5 allocate the cost of sponsorship to the Roma LDO budget work order 14825 2539201 we have a second a councillor Hancock but any oh do you I have do, a question but I, I just wonder um, if the mover would be happy it just doesn't read quite right where it says that council number 3 that council request council be it, it sounds like we're requesting council can we just be put that council oh, yeah, request remove. to be, or just that and council? I'll, I'll, Mayor, I'll, I'll amend to point be. three to remove request council B. That can uh, sorry. I think we should be saying request to and just take out council and put request to be a gold sponsor. Yeah, yeah. Councillor Hancock, in line with Councillor O'Neill's comments earlier, have you already seconded the motion? Because we can't look no. for amendments yeah. until. Yeah, I said I was going to second the motion. So so you have yep. to second it? Yep. Okay, thank you. It's really just a typo, Mr. Yeah, Mayor. Yeah, this it's is, a, it's this a, is typo. a ty typographical <laughs> um, change, no, not, not a substantive change in the resolution. Um, O'Neill and Hancock. Oops. Council waive, that council assist, that council request to be a gold sponsor. I was just changing one word. Gold yeah. and allocate the costs associated and allocate Roma. And I'll just spell out local development <coughs> officer. Sorry, um, Madam CEO, it, it's um, no, that's that's not right. Remove request two, and it'll be that council be a gold sponsor for the event. Rather, we're not requesting; we're we're taking out the gold sponsorship. Ooh, how much money is that costing? Seven hundred and fifty dollars. Does that need to be in that recommendation no, then? Uh, in the resolution? Mm. The, the value of the gold sponsorship. We the could council put. be a gold sponsor to the value of $750. Yeah. What happens if, if that sponsorship's already gone? Do you want to have contingency for that? Or I don't think it's gone. They'll be wanting multiple upon multiple gold sponsors. Oh, right, OK, there's yeah. multiple. Yeah. And in the report it says gold sponsors, plural, right. yep. OK, when you're ready, CEO. Yep. Um, Perfect, thank you. OK, does the Mayor wish to speak to this? Thanks very much, uh, Mayor. Um, Council is a uh, one of the largest employers in the region, uh, first and foremost. But second to that, uh, we, we are uh, leaders in uh, ensuring that we are um, keeping our people local, uh, keeping employees local uh, and attracting people into, jo into jobs right across the region. And I think it would be um, a remiss of us not to be uh, supportive of an event like this, let alone being a gold sponsor. So uh, I um, strongly support uh, us uh, backing this initiative. This isn't the first time something like this has run in the region. Um, I think it was five years ago now that we had a, an employment expo uh, where um, council of, of that time um, supported the initiative, as did many other businesses across the region. So uh, I am a, a strong supporter of, of uh, this initiative. If we can keep um, our locals in jobs uh, in our community, that that's a win-win for our community. Does anyone wish to speak against the motion? Does anyone wish to speak? We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? 9-0. OK. Uh, 359, item 13.12, uh, letter of support request. Councillor Burkett. Uh, I'd like to move that Council endorse the letter of support from the Mayor on behalf of the Council to the requesting organisation for their grant application to facilitate the Beringa Fire and Water Projection, Artwork and Development. 
Okay, we have a seconder, Councillor Taylor. Any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak? We're going to go to the... Oh, oh, yeah, please I'm, go ahead. Yeah, thanks, Mr Mayor. I just think it's uh, it's a great thing, this spring of fire and water. It's been um, laid dormant for a while. It's been revitalised by the Springer Action Group for the last couple of years. So it's a, a biannual event, and I think if we can get right behind this, especially coming out of COVID, where uh, lack of functions, uh, I think it's going to be great, especially for the Mitchell community, Mitchell and district community. Okay, no one else wishes to speak. We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? 9-0. That was um, Councillor Burkett and Councillor Taylor, is that Correct. right? Correct. Uh, item number 13.13, .13, Community Housing Maintenance Upgrade. Do we have a mover? Councillor Edwards. I'd like to move that Council allocate funds from the Community Housing Operating Reserve for the identified upgrades at Units 1 and 2 at 68 Russell Street, Wallumbella. Do we have a second? A Councillor Guthrie. Any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak? We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? All those... Uh, we'll do it again. All those in favour? 9-0. Okay, 13.13. Councillor Guthrie, were you the seconder with that one? Yes. Yep. Righto, item 13.14, Queensland Feral Pest Initiative Round 2.2 Pests Without Borders Project Contract Variation. Do we have a mover? Councillor McMullen. Mr Mayor, I'll move that Council authorise the Chief Executive Officer to execute a deed of variation between Maranoa Regional Council and the Department of Agriculture and Fisheries for funding received under Round 2.2 of the Queensland Feral Pest Initiative for the deli delivery of the Pests Without Borders project. Can we have a seconder? Councillor Edwards. Oh, Councillor Ladbrook was actually first. Um, any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak to it? No, it's not looking like we've got any questions. But... We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? 9-0. Item 13.5, 32 George Street, Wallumbilla, offer property for tender. Councillor McMullen. Mr Mayor, I'll move Hold it. Hold one moment. We might have a conflict. Oh, uh, I'd like sorry. To, to declare a personal interest. Yeah, please go ahead. Um. Yeah, so declaring Councillor, Councillor Edwards. Um, the, who is, who is it about? Who, who? Is this your oranges one again? <laughs> 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 Yeah, well, I've yeah, I've it might be different. It, it is so so far removed that. Uh, you can do a voluntary. Um, what do they call it? Voluntary. The, the agenda item is about the removal of a house. We're seeking approval from the Department of Housing and Public Works to offer for sale by tender the house located at 32 George Street, Wallumbilla, which has absolutely no, nothing to do with whether we, as a collective council, allow you to sell oranges at... <laughs> yeah, I know. I understand. The current or future... Just, I guess, through you, Mr Mayor, mm. Council Edwards is just picking up that... In the body of the report, it says that the this council has plans to build a new Calico Cottage and Heritage Precinct on this land. But that's, mm. that's the only thing I could have seen. That's just it. So what about this black box here? No further action required. It's not required by legislation, but tick if no, you... No, no, that's, oh. you have to read those ones there, oh, Mr right, Mayor. Okay. 
So it's nothing to do with a community, sporting or similar organisation, political party, religious beliefs or a school. But does uh, Council Edwards have the ability to ask to be recorded a note in the minutes in general? No. no he once doesn't. he makes a dec declaration, then we have to handle it that way. Um, so in, in the who, who you're saying it's the self, yourself, so that's the last dot point, which then it, it could be purple or orange at this point in time. Mm -hmm. And if we go down to the orange, you're not applying to sell oranges at Calico Can we just Precinct. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so uh, I would say here that it's other. You want to declare that... Um, you sell oranges at Calico Cottage, which would give you two purples because it's a, you're effectively... Because really the, the person who's going to benefit from this is council because we'll be able to proceed with a council-endorsed project um, and we're making application to um, the state government. So, so who it's about is self. Um, it's not a contract between council and yourself about the supply of goods or services to council or the lease or sale of assets by council. Mm. Like you're not party no. to that. So it would just fall within the purple. So you'd have two purples. So it would be group three other. Mm. So group three is um declarable yeah that, that you currently um sell oranges at the calico cottage um but full stop and then what do you seek to do councillor well i'm 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 actually looking at section b what so three, what is personal interest? <coughs> I think the potential gain to me is greater than the benefit or loss with the, uh, a significant proportion of persons in the local government area. Yeah, so B, B covers all of um, group one, group two, group three. Righto, righto. So, so you <coughs> are declaring. So based on that here I'm declaring. Yeah, and it doesn't fit within any of those, so you're down to group three purple. Uh, sale of, yep, declarable conflict of interest. Yes. Uh, group three, that's right, other. Yep. And, and I've said I'm going to, uh, I do not wish to participate in discussion and decision making, so I'm leaving the room. Participate leave, leave, in discussion and yeah, decision I making. I do not wish to participate in discussion and decision making. So I'll leave the room while the matter is discussed and voted on. Yeah, so... The, it would be a completely different story if, if the agenda item pertained to the allocation of space within the new precinct mm. and that you wanted to apply for space yeah. to do that. But that's not what the agenda report is about. Does I'm that, still happy to leave. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. And, and councillors, are you happy with that mm -hmm. approach? Not that you're suggesting that that's what we're going to do. Oh, that, that's no, no, I'm just... Because oh. <laughs> I, I think there would be mutiny if we went down that line. No, no, but um, in terms of the interpretation... Gotcha. ..it would be very different if if we if the agenda item was allocating space within yeah, yeah. the precinct, but that's not what it's about. No, I know, but you can draw these things in or take them out. You know, you can eliminate things, you can yeah. throw all sorts of things up, but in the end... Yes. I don't want to be here while it's being discussed. Correct, so, yeah. yeah. So we've said it's two purples yep. um, and you're leaving. Yep. Are we going now? Yeah. Yeah. Get out of here. Not to be confused with oranges. <laughs> <laughs> Got another one coming up soon. Okay, item 13.15, 32... Street, uh, 32 George Street, Wallambilla, offer for property for tender. Do we have a mover, yes, Councillor? Mayor, I'll move that <coughs> Council 1 formally seek approval from the Department of Housing and Public Works to offer for sale 
by tender the house located at 32 George Street, Wallambilla, described as lot two on CP850185, with the house to be offered for removal. Two, once a approval has been granted, call for tenders, tenders to dispose of the house located on lot two on CP850185. Three, source market valuations for 32 George Street, Wallambilla. We have a second, I'll second that. Is there any opposition? Can I have a question? Have Please go ahead. Please, Tanya. Tanya, when it's for removal, um, you don't expect to get the value for it, do you? Like, I see the value that it's valued at now, the market value, but if you move a house, you're not going to get that value. So are we still allowed to sell it? I just remember that someone saying before that council has to no. sell something for the value, but you're not going to get that value if you're going to ask them to remove no, the house. Good. So. Good. 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 Thank you. Okay, so we've got a mover and a second. Are any opposition to the motion? Does anyone wish to speak to the motion? I'll speak to the motion. I think there's a great opportunity uh, to keep moving with a wonderful project for Wallen Billa that seems to have pretty strong support in the community. And uh, yeah, this is one step on that journey and I uh, look forward to seeing if we can progress it. Okay, um, we'll go to the vote. All Sorry, just bear with me. Sure. I just noticed um, we just need to fix this preface. I think that council formally seek approval. To, that once approval is be grand call, call for tenders to dispose and that council source yeah, similar concept to before Councillor Hancock. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, no one else wished to speak. We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? 8 0. We can get Councillor Edwards back. Point sixteen, page three seventy nine, Marino and Netball Association request for assistance. We have a move. A councillor Hancock uh, was. Yeah. Or do you have a question? Okay. Well, then uh, we've got councillor Taylor as a mover. Do you want me to move it first? Or? No. Well, we we'll do the we can do the question, but you were happy to move, were you? Yep. yep. Please go ahead, councillor Hancock. I just noted um, through you, Mr. Mayor, to um, Manager Ed. Um, I just note in the report that in the recommendation we're moving at option A, um, number one of the recommendation we're moving option A, but uh, previously um, when I read through the report it was actually they were happy with option B. So um, in the background, I meet on page 380, a meeting was held between Maranon Apple Association <coughs> Council staff to gauge level, blah, blah, blah. Discussion was held around those two options, and where did I read that they they preferred option B? Is that over at the near the wall pavilion? Option B was near the uh, netball courts. Yeah, the west, the west, the southwestern end of the ball um, of the cattle section. Yeah. Oh, here, option two was a preferred site. Sorry, it was just following on from that. And option two was the preferred site which would be option B, but in the rec officer's recommendation, it's option A. I'm just wondering if that's a typo or if that's... 
Yeah, exactly. I'll have to clarify that with the author, Councillor Hancock. That didn't come last. Second, I'll make sure we lay this on the table cool. to get that information. All those in favour? Oh, is there any? Did you have another question? No, no, I was just going to ask Councillor Neil because he needs this. Well, it, and I was just going to say that, yeah. Councillor mm. Burkett, um, <clears throat> we did agree to option B when we resolved yeah. to do this in 2020. Yeah, I thought so too. But that's that's where I read it, but something may have changed, so I just like that information before that's laying we vote on, on the it. Table. Yep. So everyone voted for laying on the table? Yeah. Yep. So it's 9 0. You will, I just, I don't know, did I, did I vote then? I know whether you lifted your hand. Let's do it again. All those in favour? 9 0. Okay, um, page 387, item 13.7, advertising sign on council land, Shady's Lagoon. I'd like to move that council uh, thank the applicant. Um, uh, well, actually, I might change, um, I might change, I'm going to go uh, different to the officer's recommendation. Um, and I'd like to start with uh, council um, requests uh, expressions of interest. Call. Call expressions of interest for um, a sign at Shady's Lagoon with the opportunity for to include 30 third party advertising. Um, and uh, to the Deputy Mayor, is there anything else that we would need to if we're putting in expressions of interest out? Just oh, got a promotion sorry. to deputy mayor. Oh. <laughs> sorry, I heard the deputy, deputy right? Deputy mayor, and then to the deputy director. So. <laughs> um, Councillor Hancock, yeah. 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 Obviously, the recommendation was it was just probably because it was such a high visible corner, and we had a good conversation about like places like Bassett Park. We do advertising, but we don't try and do it at the main entrance. We try and do it away from the main entrance, and it just it was about the look of the main entrances there. And he was very understanding of that. I did suggest an alternate location with the car park, but it, it was it wasn't highly visible enough for him. So, Mr. Mayor, to answer your question, yeah, that that would be the way if you are going to do that uh, would be. To go and express an interest for all parties, you wouldn't be able to award it to yeah. straight to the one exactly. person. So, and uh, I'd also like to put point two that the sign needs to um, have artistic value incorporated in the um, expressions of interest for the sign, and um, and probably point three would be. Um, to do with the costing, like is there any any cost going to be charged or is it going to be at no charge? Um, so we can, I, council can have a look at that and see what's... Probably with the signage, Mr. Mayor, these are a good point about the signage there, the type of it, because yeah. that thing was raised by, uh, probably with, with um, Deputy Director Cam's team was just because of the, it is an intersection there. If you had someone go through an intersection there about with crashes and that there too, had to be such constructed such that it isn't going to create a hazard. Mm. Um, Cam, I don't know if you want to comment on that. So it has to be a certain type of sign anyway. Um, yeah, not, not, not a lot more to add to it, but more that just signs on the on intersections that they just need to be what they call friable so that they can <coughs> they can shear off as opposed to, yeah, cause a, cause an issue if they're, if they're struck. Like if you're talking proper drill stem filled with concrete, 
for example, um, presents presents a bit of an issue there. I'm not I'm not 100% familiar where that there's. I know there's some trees there. Just have to have a look if the, if a tree is going to protect protect it. If it's something that could be taken into consideration. This is where the timber posts are now, so yeah. it would be replaced. Yep. So I'd be happy to have some guidance in there about size or whatever if we were, um, you know. Um, but that would be the, um, uh, when do we get that about the costing? So uh, what, what's your intention there, Mr Mayor? Are they to give a um, estimate <coughs> what they're prepared to pay? Or well, either pay or they might do it at no cost um, or they might want to charge for doing the site. Just trying to work out the cost. Is this the cost of the sign, or is this the the fee for people to include their advertising? Yeah, I probably ought to suggest then, rather than just probably if that's where way council want to go, is rather than actually probably uh, having a resolution that we actually go out to the community asking for it, is maybe that a report be brought back like we did with the car park on on how we would do it and how we would call for the public and what it would look like and then council can then vote on that report so maybe that's the way that you know, a report be brought back to council on on um, expression of interest for signage on that location uh, including costs and, and and type of sign yeah so because someone might come and say well, well we'll because of the third party benefit we'll provide the sign or it could be so yeah, I'm happy to I'm happy to have a report back. Uh, definitely with that artistic uh, sign to incorporate artistic value, and uh, with costings because they might do it uh, for no cost to council. Um, they might be willing to pay a fee. So it's all that flexibility in that report. Just a minute. Um, should you have in there like advertising sign? All that says is interest for a sign at Shady's Lagoon. Is it advertising signs for well, commercial it's advertising? Actually, actually both. So it's a Shady's Lagoon sign and third party advertising. So I'm happy to put that in there. Shady's Lagoon uh, sign hmm. and, and third party advertising. Mayor, can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, I don't know who to exactly, but didn't we do all this with up the creek with signage through um, Justine down at the big rig? Do, am I missing something here or is this something else he wants as well? This is addition to that through you, Mr Mayor. Uh, they were fingerboard signs, um, just like directional fingerboard signs uh, pointing to the museum. And, and um, so we actually have got some of them up. Um, he's actually got a, a logo, a little fox. Uh, and we're not going to incorporate that on the fingerboard sign. Under our, um, under our signage policy for roads, you, you can't have private stuff on, on your fingerboards. But I, I also you know, I've no problem with it actually on the Gungadu walkway, just to direct pedestrians, which is what he is actually after. So, oh. so he is actually um, after incorporating his logo on our fingerboard signs, not on the road side. So I, had, I did go and see Robert. He said, no, just on that, the Gungadu pathway, if I could get one each end of the pathway directing people and it's just a maroon fingerboard uh, board that says, just says museum with an arrow and 1.1 kilometres that way. Now he wants one. Uh, and then, in, but this is in addition to that, councillor. Yeah, it's a, it's quite a substantial sign on that corner, uh, directing people to uh, to the lake, to his okay. museum. I thought, we, I thought we filled it in there, but anyway, probably. It's a supplementary request. I was confused it's as well, councillor Taylor. But um, yeah, solve one, but this is an yeah, extension. Um, councillors, how about that wording that's on the screen, that a report be brought back to council with a view to calling expressions of interest for a sign at Shady's Lagoon with the report to include information and suggestions about locational signage and third party advertising, artistic value and cost and proposed fees. Yeah, so that will include a report about having the sign plus third party advertising, so it'll be in with the report to include information and suggestions about locational signage and third party advertising. Okay, can we have a second for that motion? Mr. Mayor, just before you do, just if I could suggest maybe with the location of the sign, maybe it's locational and a design, because the question goes back to the question you asked before about the design, uh, yeah, because it is on the intersection. Design and artistic value. Yeah. And that includes safety and 
Yeah, that'll include that safety one. They're just it is on an intersection there, and people do have a tendency to run through intersections at times. So, design um, having regard to safety and artistic value. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's good. Okay, so we had a second to Councillor Edwards. Is Councillor Edwards, are you happy with that motion as a, as a seconder? Sorry, who is the second again? Council Edwards. Yes, yes, Mayor Golder. Righto. Okay. Uh, any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak to it? I certainly do. I think uh, any opportunity where we've got an opportunity to improve one of our um, lagoon parks, um, improve signage, and maybe uh, benefit in some way uh, third-party advertising. Um, in the region, I do believe it's worth a report and um, I do think we've got to look at things differently uh, because it may be a way that it uh, improves something and not costing council any money uh, could be one of the options that come, come up in the expressions of interest. Okay, does anyone else wish to speak? We'll go to the vote. All those in favour, all those against, 8-1 if I can call for a division. Okay, moving on. Is it? Right. No. This is the last this one. Last one. Last one for the open agenda. Right. They're keen to keep going, so we'll just keep going and for one more. <laughs> Thank you, Emma. Thank you. Item thirteen point eighteen, Public Library Strategic Priorities Grant Program, twenty 2020 twenty one commercial TVs for libraries. Do we have a mover? Councillor Edwards. I'll move that Council 1 uh, submit an application for funding under the Public Library Strategic Priorities Grants Program 2020-21, up to $25,000 uh, GST exempt. Uh, 2 approve the Chief Executive Officer or Delegate to authorise the online funding application and sign the funding agreement if successful. And 3 note the requirement for projects to commence no later than 1st July 2021 and conclude within one year of the date commenced, uh, 30th of June 2022 in brackets. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Ladbrook, I've got one question. Um, obviously no one knows what will happen out of the grant or the funding, but is that uh, within the realms, that amount for our sort of region uh, could, um, could work there? Yeah, please. Uh, yeah, thanks for your question, Mr. Mayor. Yes, yes. Uh, so there's, there's been some dialogue with the uh, state libraries with this yep. grants program about this. Um, it's a totally appropriate amount for us. We've been through uh, information technology. Our managers sort of scoped out the project, and it's well within that budget. Um, and we're reasonably confident of, of, of getting a grant of this nature. Okay, thank you, Manager Ed. Okay, uh, anybody like to speak to this motion? We're gonna go to the vote. All those in favour, nine zero, and we'll break for lunch back in an hour. <coughs> One, adopt a new resident or new family and adopt senior, adopt a senior initiative. Uh, do we have a mover? Councillor Hancock. Yes, Mayor, I move that a report be brought to Council regarding Two initiatives. One, adopt a new resident or new family, and two, adopt a senior. Okay, do we have a seconder? Councillor Burkett. Any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak? Councillor Hancock. Yeah, thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, I've just brought this to the table because we've heard several times that when new people come to the town, they're not sure, they don't know anyone, they're not sure of what's on. Um, so I've been thinking about this for a little while, and I've also <coughs> been told about the Adopt a Senior um, initiative that was happened many, many years ago, as I've stated in the report, uh, in Roma and how successful that was. And so I just think it would, um, if that was so successful, then let's have a look at doing a new initiative um, in adopting a new resident or new family and re-looking at doing the Adopt a Senior um, initiative so that people 
so that people can connect with people, so that they can know what's going on. They've got somebody that they can um, that they can talk to to get advice in the community, and that's why I put this forward um, today. Okay. Does anyone else wish to speak? Councillor Taylor, and then Burkett. Um, I, yeah, I, I'm with Joe on this one, um, and I actually think it might be worthwhile checking out um, people that have retired. You know, like I know a couple of ladies that put their hand up to do community things and nobody wants them. So, you know, I've got two people in mind as it is. So, like, I just feel if, some, if they knew that they were needed, uh, and it's a great thing, yeah, show the kids where the park is, show mum where the Woolies is, you know, um, the CWA, take them to bowls, I don't know. But I just think there is a, a real opening, especially for the fact that we need more people to come to town for the jobs that we can't fill. So, yeah, I think it's a great idea, Joe. Yep. Yeah, I'm all for it. I had a situation yesterday that I uh, had to get a house finished for a lady with two kids moved all the way back from the coast and they arrived at 5.30 and the house, look, I, I'm glad it was her, not me, and I just felt so sorry that I couldn't be there today to, you know, to show where everything is and help her out because people like her just moved to town, desperately need someone to turn up the door the next day, say, look, I'll give you a hand but I can show you where this is and this is. And I think uh, if we can get this welcome package to go with it, because, yeah, it is a big void that needs filling, and I, yeah, no, I think it's a great idea. OK, <laughs> anyone else wish to speak? Could I just sum up, Mr Mayor? Yeah, please, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to um, agree with both Councillor Taylor and, and Burkett. Um, one of the things that I've been hearing around the community is this is actually... Not only is this actually good for the new people who are coming to town, but it is actually, there is people in our community who has actually said, I'd be happy to be on a list to, to be somebody who can show people around. So it's those people that might be a bit even lonely in our community that can, that this might fill a void there. So I think that this could be a win-win situation. And I think the way it will happen, the staff will bring back the report to us, um, where you call for interests and expressions of interest and that sort of stuff to see who might be um, interested in doing this, but I think it's a win-win for both. Okay, we'll go to the vote. All those in favour? 9-0. L2. Birth, death and marriage notices. Do we have a mover? Councillor O'Neill. Uh, Chair, I'll move that, um, uh, that a report be prepared for an upcoming council meeting with costings for um, these notices, being the birth, death and marriage notices, but uh, to be included in future bottle tree bulletins, along with other suggestions on how council may be able to circulate notices across the Maranoa community. Okay, do we have a second of that <coughs> motion? Councillor Ladbrook, any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak? Councillor O'Neill. Thanks, Chair. Um, I've tabled this uh, today uh, because um, we have uh, over the last uh, six or so months uh, had a void in the community in, in sharing these notices uh, with uh, our, our residents. Uh, and it uh, was a conversation that I had with a senior member of our community that has uh, himself noticed um, that this is a real void. Uh, and a lot of um, his friends in the groups that he's associated with have also been noticing this. So I thought um, uh, the best thing to do was to table this report to Council for us to consider whether uh, Council should fund um, uh, a couple of extra pages in the Bottle Tree Bulletin so there was a regular publication that included the birth, death and marriage notices and I look forward to a report coming back to Council with uh, the costings and what options there may be outside of what I've put forward um, uh, to uh, make sure that these important notices are getting out to our community. Um, yeah, does anyone else wish to speak? Uh, Councillor Taylor. I also, um, I think this is a great idea too, but I wondered in the report if maybe they could have a look at putting it on the radio, as in <coughs> nine o'clock every, every day, the birth or the death notices at least, um, you know, so that all the grandmas know that at nine o'clock you put the radio on, you listen to the news and you get a, the death notices for the day or something. I don't know, it might be too expensive, I don't know. <coughs> I just thought it was another avenue we might be able to look at. In the report. So, does the mayor have, have any uh, appetite? Well, mayor, I, I think the um, I think the staff have heard another avenue um, uh, 
Um, I don't necessarily think it needs to be part of the resolution, but um, having uh, the last bit, which is... We just put EG radio on the end. Sure. Yeah, just for a prompt for the people who are not in the room. Is the second a happy with that? No. Yes, I am. Yes. I'll just speak on this too. I think the other thing that needs to be looked at is I don't think we've really got our encouragement and policy right for the notice board that's in the main street that counts are funded. Uh, I don't really see, I might be wrong, but many people using it and I do believe it needs to be used uh, as council funded it. So maybe we need to go and get the information on uh, from the, you know, local... Um, uh, you know, services that we have in town and, and away and put it up because there's some people that will just come downtown and wherever it is, they will check it out. So I think that's underutilised as well. They're not Enormous. using it though, are they? Beg your pardon? They're not using it. I haven't seen one in there yet. No, that's what I mean. But maybe it might be that um, just like this report is, we're, we're going to get the information <coughs> and actually um, putting it up. It could be something that council may wish to do. I thought they had to come here and get the key and put it in. Yeah, that, well, the, the, the point that I'm saying is maybe the, our policy or how, how easy it is or, or encouraging is is not right and it yeah. needs changing yeah. uh, because that could be another thing for people who don't listen to the, uh, what read the paper or, or the radio that they could go down the street and get the same information. Yeah. That's only for mm -hmm. one town and we've got many, but it is something that council has funded. Mm -hmm. Okay, anyone else wish to speak? Does the mover wish to sum up? Um, thanks, Mayor. I'm, um, just given that you've introduced the point that you made, <clears throat> maybe one of the things we need to consider with that is just to remove the glass. Now, the risk, of course, is that people tear the notices down, but no notices are going up there anyway. Mm -hmm. So if we just have it so that anyone can put any notices up that are relevant to the community, Unlikely. then it's up, it's up to you know individuals to manage that. And I, I have faith in our community that they'll do the right thing. So maybe that's something we need to consider. But in terms of what I put forward here today, um, just welcome the support of councillors. Okay, we'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Nine zero. L3, delegation of council powers to the Chief Executive Office under the Local Government Act, uh, Local Government Regulation 2012, Queensland LOGR. I've got a uh, question. Um, is there any been any changes from last year to this uh, document um, when we've done this in the past? Director? Uh, the changes are outlined on, outlined on page seven. Seven, yeah. So these changes to the, the delegations have, uh, as a result of, changes in the legislation. Oh, yes, okay. So they relate to overdue rates and charges. Yes. In particular, uh, the conduct of auctions for sale of land for outstanding rates and also procedures uh, following an auction and then selling the land. So they're outlined in blue are the changes and there's also some numbering changes and a slight wording change around default contracting procedures. Uh, have a mover, Councillor O'Neill. I'll move the count, um, I'll Council 1 under Section 257 of the Local Government Act 2009 resolved to delegate the exercise of powers contained in Schedule 1 of the instruments of delegation included in the officer's report to the Chief Executive Officer. These powers must be exercised subject to any limitations contained in Schedule 2 of the attached instrument of delegation for the Local Government Regulation 2012. And two, all uh, prior resolutions delegating the same powers to the Chief Executive Officer are repealed. We have a seconder. Councillor Burkett, any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak? We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? Nine zero. <coughs> application for reconfiguring of a lot one into two lots at 236 Edward Street Roma reference 2020 slash 20 220 
do we have any questions? I brought back the mayor just said this council were looking at selling the property and the question was raised about whether we could actually cut off the back section. We didn't really want to sell the property with the half the land being on the other side of the levy bank. So with the previous direction from council to subdivide the lot into two, um, which enables us to sell off that front portion with the house and still retain the back portion. Um, this is the one that council acquired. It is just there, just right at the end of the, um, the levy bank. Yeah. Okay, do we have a mover? Councillor Burkett. I move that application for reconfiguring a lot, one lot into two lots at 236 Edward Street in Roma, being more accurately described as lot one on RP4380, be approved subject to listed relevant and reasonable development conditions and general advice listed below. Should I have said one to? No, 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 no. No, no. <laughs> no not, not reading me out. We've been no, 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 we've been no, no, don't even do that. We've been down that road. Okay, you subject did very well, Councillor Burkett. Subject to the listed and, and early now. relevant, listed relevant and reasonable development conditions and general advice below. Listed below is what Councillor Burkett yeah. said on the end of advice. Advice yeah. listed below. <laughs> I was going to read the lot. Right, do we have a seconder? Any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak? I'm just going to ask a question. Please go ahead. This, once this is finalised, will this be the premises that will go on the market then? Is this what we're... Well, Mr. Mayor, I'll, uh, agree. I'll probably bring another report back. Um, just with the... Uh, we did actually have a report up about the sale of the actual whole block and we requested to subdivide off, so we'll bring another report back seeking council permission to sell off the actual house and, and the new, newly formed lot. Yeah. If council... I do believe, <laughs> oh, I do sorry. believe you, you, I mean, if someone has approached council about the purchase, looking to tender for the, to purchase the house yeah. for removal. So. And, and through you, Mr Mayor, I'll probably have to get a new, just a new uh, valuation on it because obviously the block is block, now yeah. smaller. So the valuation will probably change a bit, but it won't take a lot to just update that. Um, I'll, I'll still need to do that. You know, uh, Mr Mayor, that was what I was asking. Um, a couple of people asked me mm -hmm. for that house to, for removal, you know, to purchase the house because the block, it's not a very small block, is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it will be now. I think it's uh, 1,700 square metres, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, which is still bigger than most house blocks. Most yeah. house blocks are a thousand. So it'll be offered for sale and they can remove it if they wish. Correct. Yeah. Yep. If we don't through. get any takers for the sale, Mr Mayor, we, we can put the house up for removal. Just through you, Mr Mayor, I don't know if the new council have seen it, but the back steps or the back door are very close to the levy bank. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. We drove past it, didn't we? We did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah maybe when it comes back, it. Well, it depends what council decides, but they might be able to offer it both ways. So, yeah. You know. Um, okay, so we've got a mover and a seconder, I believe. Um, anyone else wish to speak? <coughs> I think we just got to go to the vote. All those in favour? 9 0. number please. 6061. One, thank you. L5, application to Arts Queensland for Regional Arts Development Fund, RADF program in 2021 slash 22. Um, I just have a question. With this one, I've had some feedback about. Apparently, we we've said on that we'll have three programs a year for RADF, and we haven't been doing it or something. Yeah, we've um, currently got a um, request for an internal review on. Oh, that. have we? Yeah. Right. So 
what will this end up if we do this one? Is this one per year or is this, what, what's our, so what's our plan so far? Mr Mayor, the, what this report is at the moment is actually us putting into the grant to Queen Arts Queensland oh, and I the see. Queensland Government requesting the funds for RADF funding. Right. This is not actually us putting it out to the, out community, to the community asking for oh, okay. them to apply for the oh, funding. So um, with RADF funding, what happens is that we get nominated, well, we get 30,000 from Arts Queensland a, a year, and then council then puts in money towards that as well, and then we go out to, to the community requesting that they apply for the funding. And so we can do one or two rounds, and if we have money left over, we can then go for a third round. Oh, I see. Yeah. Righto. Okay. Uh, Councillor Hancock. Yeah, Mr Mayor, I'm happy to move. Please go ahead. I move that Council 1 apply to Arts Queensland for $30,000 under the Regional Arts Development Fund, RIDF <coughs> program for 2021-22. 2. Provide the required contribution of $12,857 from Council's 2021-22 budget allocations. 3. Allocate $15,000 for Council RIDF strategic initiatives in the budget aspect of the application. Okay, well, we had a second to first, Councillor O'Neill. Uh, any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak? Just a question, if Please I can. go ahead. <coughs> Through you, Chair, uh, to Officer Kim. Just how many rounds have we run in the current year on this? Is it two. Two. We've done two. Okay. It's like we have in every other year. I right. Thank you. Okay, does anyone wish to speak? Then we're going to the vote. All those in favour? Nine zero. L6, request for further term extension, NLIS compliance scanning and data collection services agreement, Roma Sayards. I would like to move that council not approve the request to extend the NLIS compliance scanning and data collection services. Um, and, and then two, or basically just one and if I could get advice is there any other um, wording so this will be against the recommendation um, any extra advice except for that that you would suggest um, director as far as any wording except for not um, and what should we put in there to go out to it's not really is it ready to go out to tender or well, that'll just happen, that'll happen automatically, yeah. wouldn't it? Yes. So we don't need to say anything about that. So, yeah, so not approve the request to extend the NLIS compliance scanning and data collection services for a further two years as per clause. Well, well, we can. Per. You wanna, you we want can to we just, just take that out? Take the end off. Yeah, just not approve the request. Not approve the request. Or should it be decline the request? Or what are we? Just leave oh. it at that. Not approve the request. Okay, do we have a second for that motion? No, Councillor McMull. Mr Mayor, we'll have to get rid of the dot point two. Yeah. 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 Just oh, just <laughs> see where, where we're going. If there was a second. I'll second it on that ground, Mr Mayor. Okay, uh, any opposition? Please go ahead. Um, I'm just wondering why we weren't going with it. Do you have a reason? Like, uh, I'll be happy to put the reason in there that I do believe that um, I believe going back out to tender is in the, the best interest of the local government. Um, and um, yeah, that's what I'd say there. Okay. Um, does anyone want to speak for the motion? I've got a question. Please go ahead. Through you, Chair, probably to CEO Julie. If we wanted to discuss um, uh, uh, the previous performance, is that something that do we go into committee? What do we? I mean, I think that would be that would be a commercial private. matter that yeah. we would commercial, go into yeah. council to discuss. 
I move we go into committee, but I'll need the words uh, into closed session. I'll need to, the words. That could could we lay it on yeah. the table yeah. and, and then we can add it to the confidential okay. item schedule? Okay. I'll move we lay this on the table until later in the meeting. Right, all those in favour? Nine zero. Wallenbilla APLNG project community consultation results and project nomination. Uh, Councillor Edwards. Uh, sorry, I have a personal interest. Uh, to do with the um, Calico thing again. Not sure if this is the same as the other one or not. Go and get the questions from before. <laughs> That'd be just on that favourites, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. Two two purples, is it? Or two oranges or something? No, two purples. <laughs> don't go don't do oranges. <laughs> two purples and uh, So the declaring councillor is Councillor Edwards and it's about your, yourself. Self, yep. Uh, and it is just another, a group three, which is currently sell oranges at the Calico Cottage and is your intention still the same? You do not wish to participate in discussion and decision making, yes. Is that correct? Easy. Yeah, that's fine. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. So, um, Wallenbilla APLNG project community consultation results and project nomination. Do we have a mover? Councillor McDonald. I'll move that <coughs> Council one receive and consider the comments from the community consultation carried out through the Council's Have Your Say website to authorise the Chief Executive Officer or Delegate to, sue, to seek APLNG's endorsement of the Wallenbilla Calico Cottage and Heritage Precinct to be funded through the Community Project Funding Payment for Wallenbella, including signing any documentation as required Three, sub subject to the endorsement of the project by APLNG, include the project in Council's final financial planning documents in accordance with the Local Government Act 2009 and Local Government Regulation 2012. Okay, we have a second. Councillor uh, Guthrie, any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak to it? We're going to go to the vote. Oh, uh, sorry, uh, are we going to have a... It says we're going to consider the, the feedback. Are we going to have a discussion about the feedback? Yeah. What, what did uh, the... Um, well, we had a mover and a second of that move to motion. So have you got that motion there? <coughs> well, I've got questions. Right, eh? Yeah, please ask your question. Through the chair, just some of the feedback here, you know, one that springs to mind or, or stands out, real grass instead of artificial grass. Have I missed something in the design? Is it artificial grass? Through you, Mr Mayor, um, there's artificial, artificial grass noted on there, but um, we've, we've picked that up and that'll be something that, that we'll, um, we'll amend. Um, there was some feedback also on the, um, from the um, Calico Cottage group and that that, yeah. that have, has been heard and taken on board. So. Mr Mayor, um, um, Councillor Guthrie and myself went up there last Friday and had a good talk to, and I think Lucy, Lucy went up as well. It was a good day with them and um, we spoke about the grass. They didn't want artificial grass, which was fair enough. And um, some of the cooking facilities. So they were very happy with all the, all everything we talked about and discussed. <coughs> yeah, so it was all good. 
uh, uh, well, Councillor Hancock. Yeah, um, thanks, Mr. Mayor. I actually just um, read one of the community feedback about um, acknowledging the volunteers from the Cap uh, from the Calico Cottage, um, and I think that that's actually a really great idea to somehow somehow acknowledge their you know where it started, I guess, and and their volunteers' contribution that's gone into for many many years. Um, so that would be I'm just picking up on that comment. I think that would be a very nice thing mm. for council to do. Um, th through you, Mr. Mayor, it's something that we've we've also taken on board. We're we're in the process of obviously preparing the building our regions, um, building better regions funding application at the moment, and um, it's something that was was built into the um, funding application for the sale yards around the tour leaders. So we've done a very similar approach in the funding application with the the Calico Cottage and the history of that to to try and celebrate some of them original champions and, and that in there. So, but it, some of the feedback is um has has been quite good and added some good value to this project so but now take that on board um, so that's one example but I think there is an opportunity in the fit out of potentially some plaques or some yeah some sort of recognition there which um, at this stage of the project I think we'll take that on board take it on notice and and, um, and, and and make sure that as it gets closer to construction we can have more meaningful conversations on how that look or what that where we can incorporate that yep thank you that's our only did you have other questions yeah, there, there seems to be a bit of a trend here and I apologize I've just learned that there was a, a briefing on this last week which I, I had a, a, a commitment in Toowoomba that I needed to get to uh, with my little one so I wasn't here um, there seems to be a common thread around um, uh, the commercial kitchen has there been a fair discussion? There has, right? That was all done. Yep. So, so, so the opportunity so, yeah. has been made that it is in there, but if it is not needed, it doesn't need to. Possibly, it may not get fitted out at the time, and council will be obviously making that decision. So there's flexibility there if it's not needed. The girls at Walla Billa were happy with happy that. Happy with that. Mm. You know, so they could use that space mm. and. Uh, real happy. We just emphasise that long term, should there be the need for a, a cafe or commercial kitchen, that you actually need to have the plumbing, etc., in the walls. So all that's go. still there. Mm. That's there. Should it progress that way? Councillor Hancock. I'm just clarifying that, Mr. Mayor. I thought our discussions was that we were going to have it there, but make that decision closer to the time. So is that? What was said down at Wollongbilla that what we, was said that was, was it would go out for tender with those particular costs as additions, so that then this decision could be made by the council okay. when yeah. they accept the mm -hmm. the costings for the actual construction. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, right. thank you. All right. Any other questions? Okay, we got a motion there. Um, uh, no one else wishes to speak. I don't think the mover spoke to it. No, you're right. So we're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? Nine zero. Eight zero. Eight zero. Eight zero. One oh three. L8, Policy Review Debt Recovery. I'd like to move that... The Sorry, Mr. Mayor, we just um, we make a clarification point. Sure. There's, there's two instances that we um, identified during the break, one for Councillor Edwards and one for Councillor Hancock, where there has been declarations in the past, but now we've worked through it that there probably didn't need to be. Um, it was probably overly cautious. Um, so the, um, we'd just like to um, clarify for that for the Ms. Mayor, I'd like to record. advise the meeting that an interest in this matter has previously been declared by myself. However, on review of the following items... However, on review... You, however, on review, the following items have been noted. Australia Post has a monopoly on post in Australia and all debt recovery letters are mailed from the Roma Post Office. Therefore, there is no interest to declare now or in the future in relation to the debt recovery policy. Ooh, that's my method. Yeah, we just got to kill you. 
<laughs> no, no, we. Don't get exciting. <laughs> Right. Is there anything else on that? We've also saw, saw, sorted 50% of Councillor Edwards' um, <laughs> ones as well. <laughs> We've only got one left to sort. Okay. Uh, as I said, uh, I'd like Go to... Go again, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Uh, the key objective of this policy is to ensure a fair and consistent and accountable approach to council sundry debt management and collection practices recognise the importance debt recovery has on the capacity of council to deliver services to the community. Sorry, Mary, you're Sorry. moving the executive summary. You're reading the executive, not oh, the recommendation. Right, okay. Right, okay. right. Um, well, I'd like to move that uh, council uh, adopt the debt recovery policy with the inclusion of a clause no, that you actually have to go to the policy and advise us where what okay, because we, well, we don't actually put the explanation in the resolution it's it's the new policy goes in the, into the minutes okay sure so um, I'd like the inclusion of a option when it comes to councillors deciding on giving a um, a concession in the debt recovery policy that we can do it on um, grounds um, that we will accept an affidavit on the uh, customer's behalf explaining, which is a legal document, explaining the, um, the reason for that. And we have taken that in the past um, did, before, did so. we want to lay it on the table so you can identify where that is, Mr. Mayor, in the policy, where it needs well, to go? Where it needs to go, sure, I'm happy to do that. I'll move that we lay this on the table for later in the meeting. All those in favour? I've just got some, I've got questions. Yeah, we wanted to ask it now and we can come back when we. Haven't we adopted the policy? And if not, what did we have a substantive debate about mm. within the last? six or seven weeks where what the mayor has just proposed was discussed no no it wasn't no that was no. in relation to the rate recovery policy this is in relation to sundry debts and the other one was to put in an extra um steps like step this is about flexibility of councillors to decide a um a uh you know a debt recovery issue. Okay, so all those against laying it on the table? Do you know enough to talk with the Mayor in an adjournment? Yes. That how he wants to amend the policy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's only really one clause, but it's got to go somewhere. All those against? We'll do it again. All those in favour of laying on the table? 9-0. Who was the second? Oh, no, it was one only um, laying on the table. Yeah. Yep. Okay, L9, Request for Fee Waiver, Roma Show Society. I'd like to move that our... Um, conflict here. Oh, we've got a conflict. Good point. Here we go again. Please go ahead. Interesting. Um, when, when the CEO is ready. Okay, so the entity is the... Page. So who the report... One, two, three. Okay. Okay, so who the... So one is um, who right. the matter is about. Roma Show Society. Uh, the relationship relationship category for you, councillor. My spouse, you bet. Yep. The item number is L nine. Um, yep. Request and uh, the relationship of your spouse um, 
to the Roma Show Vice Society. President, Vice President of the Roma Show Society. President. Subject heading. So society. Yeah. And it's the request for fee waiver. Yes. Um. Uh, yeah, so it um, is actually uh, in the orange, the one down the bottom. So it's uh, it's uh, a conflict of interest. Yeah, seeking a it's an application to council for a fee mm -hmm. waiver. Yeah. Um, so I have no choice. Um, Council. Leave the room while the matter is being discussed and voted on. Perfect. Mm. Mm. Works. Anyone else? No. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> that was painless. Okay, I'd like to move that Council approve the request for, of a fee waiver uh, to Roma Show Society. Sorry, what was that, Mr. Mayor? I'd like to approve the request of a fee waiver for Roma Show Society to be granted for the 2020 2021 year, financial year. for the reasons of COVID-19 assistance and COVID-19 extra assistance. Additional. Additional assistance uh, for this year. I've already said. Um, I'll ask the question. Sure. Mm -hmm. Through you, Chair, to Robbie first, yep. Um, so can I just get my head around this recommendation? It says that council declined the request of a fee waiver due to the Roma Show Society already being granted a fee waiver for the financial year we're in in which the show will be held. Is that correct? Oh, they've already received one. Received so therefore, one. shouldn't we have just written to them to say we've already granted you the fee waiver for this year? Why would I'm 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 confused yeah. as to why this would come if we've already given it to them? Uh, yeah, Manager Ed, did you you would like to answer? I do beg your pardon. Right, so it's not the fee waiver that they've asked us for isn't for the show. Um, oh. That makes sense. It's in the report. That's right. I did read that. Upstairs bar area. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and did uh, we have a second for that motion? Council approved the request of a fee waiver due. Sorry. And I've got I've got Please follow up question. So through your chair. On page 124, it says in 2019 council received fifty thousand dollars excluding GST funding from the Western Queensland PHN <clears throat> and council of that day resolved to offer the Roma Show Society ten thousand dollars this funding to support the Roma Show in 2020, which didn't go ahead. Did that was that ten thousand dollars? for a fee waiver to the facility? Um, for you, Mr Mayor, the um, $10,000 was given to the Roma Show Society to use as as they will for the, Roma, for the Roma Show for 2020, along with quite a number of other events during that year with, the, with that whole amount that was given. So the 50000 we allocated it to quite a lot of community groups. 
uh, the Roma show, because the event was cancelled, their $10,000 has not been used yet. We have been given an extension from um, Western Queensland Primary Health for those groups that were not able to use their funding in that year. And then further, Mayor, um, to Officer Tennille, did we receive a request from the Roma Show Society in the lead up to the 2020 Roma Show to waive the fees for the week of the show? Uh, through you, Mr Mayor, I don't think we quite got that far with Roma Show because with COVID with hitting COVID. so early, they never got the chance to I thought that might have been. They did make the decision earlier. Yeah. Okay. Not to go. Thank you. Okay. I'll read so, that again. The council approved the request of an additional fee waiver to Roma Show Society for 2021 year financial year for the reasons of uh, COVID-19 additional assistance. Can I just ask a question? Oh, Wendy, you first. Yeah. 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 Um, sorry, Tanil, if I could just ask a question. Why, why then is it the officer's recommendation to decline the request? Through you, Mr Mayor, I, my recommendation to, rec to decline goes with the policy that Council currently has. So my, my partial advice to Council would be to decline to follow our policy within the community grants and in-kind assistance. But in saying that, there is the exemption in the policy that allows Council to approve requests as they see fit. Yeah. And that is, that's probably just with the policy there, it allows council to do it. We're quite comfortable with the recommendation that Mayor's put up. It was just that there was a fee waiver given in this financial year for the upstairs bar. So it's in, in technicality that is actually in contradiction to the policy. So as an officer can only recommend yeah. that. But Make certainly um, as, as, that's why we highlighted it in the report to council saying you do have the uh, yeah. power to actually to yeah. use that. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. Who else had questions? Councillor Evans? I just, just noticed uh, that, that exemption there. It's actually a, like a uh, discretionary powers, which is in the policy document. Um, is that a... Like it's probably nothing to do with this, really, but I, I think we came across that before, didn't we, with a policy? Um, is, that a, is that a normal normal clause to have in a, in a policy, and a discretionary thing on a case-by-case, -case, on a one-off basis? Is that... A normal thing? Pretty normal and I think, I, I personally think council needs it yeah. because there's a lot of things that are out of the box sometimes. Yeah. It's up to council whether they do it or not. No, I'm, yeah, that, well that was, the, uh, that was the question. I was sort of um, steering myself towards saying that that's a very good thing to have in a document, you know, where you can do it on a, do it on a, um, on a case by case or a one off basis, yeah, so. Was it Councillor Burke that was next? Mm. No, no, I was just Okay, do we have a do we have a seconder for that motion? Councillor McMullen. In the, any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak to it? I certainly will. I think uh, for all of our community <coughs> groups, and I think the bigger the the event, the more of a, a shock and tragedy COVID nineteen was that everyone lived through because if you've had anything to do with large events, you understand they, they live on a knife edge and they really take enormous resources just to bankroll. So I believe any assistance we can offer to Roma Show Society um, would be needed. And it's fantastic that the committee's uh, up and running and planning the show again for this year. So uh, certainly we'll be supporting this motion. Does anyone else wish to speak? We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? 8 0. And we will have to put a statement. Yeah, I'm happy to do that. And it's probably just oh, with, to do with the policy. Would like to. Policy exemptions. Um, well, I can start off by saying uh, uh, that this is a COVID 19. important initiative as the show was uh, did not run last year so so mayor could you put at the front in line with the, um, the policy exemption yep. uh, the, in line with the um, exemption clause in the policy councillors exercise their discretion due to what you just said yeah, due to COVID-19 as permitted in the policy? Yep, sure.
I would say council is exercising its um, discretion, discretionary um, powers um, to consider this uh, additional request. Um, what was the words that you, um, uh, due, due, due to, to COVID-19 effects? COVID-19 effects. So we could probably just remove that double up in in the actual resolution itself because that's covered in the reason. Well, is everyone happy if we do that and is the second to happy with that? Yes. We can actually do that since we voted it. Well, we haven't moved on the next issue, but CEO is suggesting it, so it must be pretty rigid ditch. But are all the councillors happy with that or do you want to leave it in? You can't. You're right. You can't um, do it once you've mm. moved on to. If you've called the next so, item, which you haven't, you so can't the, do the it. So the the issue is we really don't need the reasons for decision because you've combined it into the one. But, but we need a statement, don't we? Don't you've we got there that? for the reasons of COVID nineteen additional assistance. Oh, I just leave it in there for people. Yeah. Okay. Leave it so. In the original. Okay, okay. As permit in the policy, council is exercising its discretionary powers. Yeah. yeah that's how you do. It. And then, yeah, we can change right. that. All done? Yeah. Are we right? Are yes. Yeah. 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 Councillor Burkett. Uh, I move that Council, if successful in acquiring the historical building located on the Roma Hospital site, gift it to the Roma District Laboratory, did I say that right? Laboratory. Laboratory. Yeah. And Mineral Society Incorporated. Approved in principle the gifted historical building to be relocated to 17 McDowell Street, Roma. Provide a letter of support to the Roma District Laboratory, that laboratory. And Mineral Society Incorporated for their grant application to the Gambling Community Benefit Fund. If successful in their grant application, allocate the shortfall of $22,897.50 to relocate and join the historical building to the $35,000 received from the grant and the amount be deducted from GL2883.2001.301, savings from local development wages. We have a seconder, Councillor McMullen. Any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak? Just have a question if you don't mind. Please go ahead. Did we get a grant? No, not yet, but this is planning. If if this is passed, if we do get the grant, then we'll put the rest of the money. Well, not oh, we, we're not sorry. getting the grant, are we? The Lapidary Club is supplying for the grant. Oh, okay. oh Yeah, that's right. The Lapidary oh, is, but then Council will put the extra 12000 in. Oh, so they're, they're applying for no, a grant. No, not 12. Is it 12? 22. 22. 22 uh, sorry, 22 to make it happen. Yeah. And it's also, this is gifting the building if we get it. Yeah, and if they don't supply. get the grant? Big pun. If they don't get the grant? Uh, then we'll probably have to look at a different option. Yeah. And three, Mr Mayor, that, and again, when we say gifting the building, it's still, it still there's a council building on council land. Yeah. But just, they're the sure. tenant. They're the tenant, so. Um, still okay. asset. Can I just double check, please, councillors, though, the, the structuring of that motion? Um, in that... All of this hinges off us being successful in acquiring the historical building, is that right? And it's and so, successful, yeah. And so far it's been fairly, like that last report we got was fairly positive that they're yeah. putting it aside, we, weren't they? I, I think we need to bring that up to the top, that council, if successful. It does say. It, does it say says that, if successful in acquiring the historical yeah. building. No, no, but the rest of it, flows from that as well, doesn't it? In the heading. Yeah, so if successful in in acquiring... It is number one, though. So yeah. No, no, but it applies equally to two, three, and okay. four, and five, doesn't it? It's, it doesn't yeah. just apply to point one. It could just copy and paste it and put it up there. So, so if oh, council... In so point one away, inquiring yeah. the historical... Hmm. 
I just have a question when you're ready, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, Building please, located it. Um, what are the chances for those grants? Does um, the new director oh. there know what um, our chances are of getting grants for that sort of thing? Oh, okay. I've said, yeah, it's not us, it's them. Yeah, isn't it? it's probably, yeah, it's depends how many applications they get. I mean, I've seen funding for this sort of thing before. So, so there's a pool of money there. We just got to hope that we get some. Oh well, they they, they will as a group, yeah. And they've they've actually they've received funding previously under this bucket of money for work they've done down there in the past as well. So they have successfully um, got funding under this uh, under this bucket before. So okay. yeah, yep. uh, I'd start with the word gift. Yeah, because it, it, it's still our building though, so maybe allocate. It, and it's in in the wrong order as well. So we're putting cart before the horse. The first letter is. Pre First step is provide a letter of support to them for their grant application to the Gambling Community Benefit Fund. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we're providing support for a co-contribution, aren't we, as part of that? I think we do have that probably the first thing is I think we do need to allocate, if council's successful in getting that building, allocating it to that site. We need to make that decision first because their application will be that will depend be dependent on it. Yeah, that's a good point. We'll need that. They'll need that certainty, won't they? That um, council. So rather than gifting it, because it is going to be remain council and council land, council asset. We're just giving it to that society to use. Because if that, I hope it never does. But if that, you know. Stops being uh, started for the use of something, something else. So council it's, assets. It's it's a, yeah. something so else. we're we're going to continue to pursue ownership. But we have, and there was a, there is a resolution on the books for that, um, and we've basically we've had uh, our councils had discussion with the actual successful person that's done the got the demolition, and they've said yes. Look, they in support um, would gift it to council uh, free of charge, but we have to remove it. So we're progressing so, that. So, so if, if, we, if we just say, note, note the um, positive progress. Uh, I think how we had a word there was if Thank council were successful in acquiring the, the, the building. But the rest of the building still remain in the whole house. It's not that we're, we're yeah, still going to put in the letter of support for the grant application, aren't we? So if we don't, they, they can apply for yeah, it, it's not if they don't actually get, if, so if they put in the actual um, application and they aren't successful, they'll apply first. for a donger. Yeah, but once you put any, they put the, the application. Land, land, land. Well, at the moment, yeah, they probably, they I still think needs to go up top there because at the moment council have said they want to take the building from the hospital, but haven't said where they're going to send it. So we're probably looking for an indication from council that they're actually willing to give it to this group. Mayor, can I make the suggestion that this lays on the table and, and a, a resolution is crafted and we come back to it? I think we're pretty close to having it done, councillors. Pretty close. I think you're pretty close, councillors. Well, we just wanna, it's just out just, of order. And then we have to come back to it. Can we just give it an extra couple of minutes or do you want to put it to the vote? No, no, I'll... Um, I'll have to walk away from that. Yeah, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Question, uh, uh, Director Rob. Um, so did you get a, uh, a letter, did you, from the, the um, lavatory people? Yeah, I, I did. I, I did discuss it with council at a briefing there mm. about a month ago yeah. um, where the lavatory club were applying for the grant and they were looking at putting a donger attached to that building. Yeah. Um, and my concern was looking at that a, a donger attached to that, that building, it, it probably looked yeah, a bit out of place, that. particularly yeah. when you got the old yeah, right. bods hall next door to it. Yeah. I knew we had council that said they wanted to save the building for the hospital, but at that point we didn't actually have a home for it. And we talked about if we did get it, it was actually possibly going to sit in the um, in the house removalist yard mm. for who knows how long until we found a home for it. So, mm. um, And then a couple of days later, I at, the, at a briefing session, I said to council, look, do we have a, a use for this? I've had an approach about uh, for the group applying for funding, um, I think this would be a good look. And I showed the photos. They're very similar buildings, different pitched roof. Um, got in principle, um, uh, I guess, uh, support from council there. I gave a copy of the photos of the building to the group. They had their meeting. They said, look, we really like it. We think it'll look good. Um, uh, our LDO, uh, Nat Walsh, has had a meeting with them, said, look, I can help you with your application. Uh, Ricky Irwin, our building 
uh, small projects um, officer, went down, had a look at it, said, yep, yeah, you could do something really good here. Um, however, we will need a resolution from Council, one, to say that we ha are happy for the building to go to that site, two, letter of support, uh, and, and if they are successful, allocate some funding there towards actually the, the ship to cover the shortfall. All, all ready to ready to go. Like, yeah. I think I should mention, Council, there was, uh, <coughs> we did get a figure for initially to relocate it, and I think it was about $80,000, it was quite high. Mm -hmm. um, we have spoken to another removalist company, uh, and then the figure they've quoted is actually in the report there, which is significantly cheaper. And it just does save double handling that building, mm. you know. So is there, I think, one bit of clarification that we need? Will they be putting in the application before we've got advice about whether we're successful or not? Potentially, wouldn't happen. Yeah, because we don't want this hinging off us waiting to find out if we're successful. That's why it's critically important where that sentence goes. So if if it is that we may well provide that letter of support first for their grant application, so that yeah. can come up to number one. And then two, that um, if successful, in acquiring the historical building from the Roma Hospital site, that. Um, so I just suggest that three and four, then Julie, the building be relocated to 70 McDowell Street, Roma, for the use of the Roma and District Laboratory, because we're not actually donating the building to them. Because if they do fold, as Council said. Down, down the track, it's still our building. Oh. To Roma for for use by, by the Roma and District Laboratory. And then um, that council that um, we don't need three. Yeah, so we don't the short fall that will strengthen if this goes through that'll strengthen their application to yes, see yeah. that yep. the rest is covered. So it's no longer a gifted historical building, is it? It's to read like um, I suppose it is gifted to council from the hospital site. We're just not gifting it to the allocate the shortfall of of that um, to the site. It's the site works. Mm, probably a better word than site works. Um. Establishment yeah. works? Uh, well, no, it's actually for, it's part of it, but the 35 won't cover the cost of relocating it, so it is actually towards the project. Towards the project. this motion yet? Funded project. Yeah. I don't believe uh, Yeah, Councillor Burke had moved it. Yeah. It's already drawn, um, moved and seconded. Yeah. Oh, we just haven't voted on it. That's right. <laughs> Just know something's not quite right when you say that, eh? It doesn't, doesn't sound right at all. Can we just say rocks? Rocks. <laughs> more to it than that, that might offend them. Mm. Oh. Greatly offend them. There's more to it than that. Mm -hmm. I'd be interested to go and have a look at it. It is good. Go and have a look. How does that how does that read, councillors? Oh, that's pretty good. That's good. Pretty good. So is 
The move are happy with that. Yeah. And the second are happy yeah, with that. For sure. Yep. Right, eh? Does anyone wish to speak to the motion? I'll speak to it. So uh, we'll just forget council allocate the shortfall of that and the amount be trans. Sorry, so who was the mover again? Sorry. Uh, council Burkett and seconded by Council McMullen. Uh, historic building that uh, community members <coughs> would like to see saved and, and working with the company that has a responsibility have been um, uh, very good to get along with. So that's excellent. We thank them for their efforts. Uh, and also a community group that would receive the use of the building would be fantastic if this motion is supported. So I wholeheartedly uh, support this motion and keeping a piece of uh, Roma's history and, and somewhere for a um, community group to grow into. Okay, does anyone else wish to speak? We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour, 9-0. L12, St Patrick's, no, L11, L11. L11, jumping the gun. L11, request for support of construction of cattle cross loading station, execution of agreement. Do we have a mover? Councillor McNeil. Oh, I've just got a... You got a question? Well, I don't know yet. Um, it's, not, it's not a question. Um, it's just that in the report, it... it tables the previous resolution that um, refers to the um, Livestock and Rural Transport Association of Queensland, which I would have a conflict with. And yet the substantive report I have no conflict with. But because they're mentioned in it, I'm, I'm not overly comfortable with what I should do. Can we remove that out of the report? Or how do we do that, CA? Is there, can we do that? Who's the conflict, sorry? So the, potential conflict? The, well, my wife works for the Livestock and Rural Transport Association of Queensland. And it's referenced in the report having provided a letter of support to council, I think, or a letter of support to the project that ended up at council, and it formed part of a resolution. Now, um, because this is a late item, I haven't had time to go back and have a look at that original resolution, but I suspect I would have removed myself because they were part of the resolution, right? Yeah, because that would have been the equivalent of a submission. A submission. Yeah, by, but now, by a letter of support. That's that's in the past. This is dealing with the project and the, um, the conflict isn't part of today's report other than it just simply referencing that resolution from some time ago. I guess the letter of support would would it would flow that it would be supportive of this happening, wouldn't it? Even though it's a different agenda item. Well, I suspect, yeah. Yeah, so it's probably still live. Do you think the 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 support for the for this going ahead? Well, probably, yeah. yeah. I, I'd be tempted to just follow the same process. I I have a conflict. I have a material interest. Um, no, neither of the above. I have, a, I, have a, I have an interest in this matter. Yep. So the uh, using the same philosophy. The only the only thing with this, and it's probably the quickest way anyway, what Councillor O'Neill's doing. But we made the decision last time to do it. This is really just signing. But it's a, a letter of support towards. The oh, project. Funding, it? No, no, it was for this project, wasn't it? I don't, oh, I don't know. I didn't read it. Sorry, um, last time back in mid October, um, I wrote to council on um, some support for this as part of the request to for a letter of support um, from the support group. And put something that yep. at the time council approved to go forward with the project and for me to negotiate a contract with the IOI. But it, it's still the, the no, extension it. of the same you're right. item. You're, you're right. Yep. So it, the related the relationship category would be the spouse. 
Well, and no, the relationship, well, the spouse to me, but the, the relationship is the employer, isn't it? Spouse to you, though. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, you're right. Um, employer, which is, employer. that's your close associates. Employer. Yeah, so the employer of your spouse um, provided a uh, written submission, which i.e. letter of support. Yep. Written submission, i.e. Uh, letter of support um, for letter of support for the project. And then on that basis, you'll leave. Well, it's now, oh yeah, yeah, okay, yep. Yeah. I was gonna say it's a, to that. do with the contract with the council, but um, yep, yeah, the submission. So on that basis, I will, uh, it's a prescribed conflict of interest and I'll leave the room. Well, the uh, matter is discussed. And, and voted upon. And voted on. And I'll, I'll go this way so I can finish making my cup of tea. <laughs> Right. Uh, did we have a move up for this? No. 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 no because oh, we're going straight oh. to a conflict. Oh, right. Okay. Well, we're going to move it, Mr. Mayor. Have you had a vote? Right. So. Vice Chair. Sorry, Mr. Chair. Yes. This is just a statement of the um, report around the funding of this. Um, yes. So I talked to the director Darren this morning. Contribution will be funded from the um, future operating purpose, which is paid away over the day to show that we've seen a sufficient level of funding for five months. Well, well, we'll need to, after all that, poor Councillor O'Neill, <laughs> we'll need to lay it on the table if it's contingent on the budget. We, we'll need to do the budget first and then the agreement. Yeah. This one. Yeah. Can I ask, a, what was the budget, sorry? This, this it requires a contribution from council, doesn't oh, it? Oh, we've already approved that, haven't we? Yeah. But it, it hasn't been in, embedded into the budget documents. Oh. So we, the the updated budget documents that we spoke about from the last meeting has also, they've also been updated to include this, but council hasn't yet adopted That's those. That's the track. In, in, yeah. yeah. Righto. Well, we lay this on the table. Can I just have a quick question? Sure. Um, Cameron, um, SAFCON, what have they got to do with it? Um, I've included SAFCON in the uh, contingency funding application. Yeah, so it's yeah. In the budget, um, sorry, individual organisational costs. So SAFCON is being engaged by Lara Lights and Olympia Construction Limited. Oh, okay. So I wasn't aware of that okay. at the first right. report. I'm now aware of it at the second report. So it's been completed yeah. for the board. And they have any they can submit that to the board if they want to. Correct, yeah. Thank you. Director Sharon, um, the IOR contribution has definitely been included in the budget papers for yes, later in the meeting, hey? Yep. Yeah, we, we've just got the agreement to execute, but we might just lay it on the table until we've adopted the budget, budget. and then execute Perfect. the agreement. Yep. Yep. I'll move we lay it on the table to later in the day, All in the moved. meeting. Okay, eight zero. It's good why I put it um, on the next one. Conflict issue. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't. They go back. <laughs> so we laid it on the table till later to get the Q2 <laughs> funding. L12, St Patrick's School Parent and Partnership Forum request for in-kind assistance. Councillor Burkett. Uh, I'd like to move that Council 1 approve the request for in-kind assistance for the use of machinery and operators to remove the dead bottle tree at St Patrick's School at 100 Alice Street, Mitchell. Two allocate funds up to four hundred and twenty-two, four hundred and twenty dollars. Sorry, to minor in-kind assistance GL two double eight seven dot double two four five dot two thousand one forward slash three hundred one. We have a seconder, Councillor Edwards. Any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak to it? We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? Nine zero. Who's the seconder? L13, Surat Yulbar Road. Do we have a mover? Councillor Hancock. 
Mr Mayor, I'd like to move that a report be brought to a future meeting of council. We have a seconder. Councillor O'Neill, any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak? Yes, thanks, Mr Mayor. Please go ahead. Um, as, you, as you can read in the report, um, there has been concerns from the both SREC community and also concerns at the uh, Yuba Development Group meeting the other night that um, some councillors attended. And uh, so I just thought that the best way to um, deal with that is to put forward a council request so that we can actually have a look at that road um, for future, future budget um, um, recommendations. Okay, so um, uh, anyone else wish to speak? We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? 9 0. Okay, so we've got a. We've got a late sugar page 150. 150 gas installation. Right beside where we get Industrial. Well, late. Late, late. late. There were additional papers. I got L16. 14 and 15. Hmm, where they went. Industrial industrial commercial development. Are they maybe under the stuff sitting at the front of your desk, Mr. Mayor? Peter? No. Hmm. Maybe I'll put it in here. Yeah. Yes. I move we lay that on the table until What is that? L14, L which is a gas for industri industrial commercial mm -hmm. development policy. Yeah, all those in favour? I actually can't vote on it because I've got a conflict on that one. Being on the table. You can on a procedural motion. Okay. <laughs> My hands up. One is okay. L fifteen. Has someone got that? Which one is eight? It is. That that one Approval that we just the did then was who moved to lay it on the table. Councillor O'Neill. One five eight there, Tyson. One five eight. Yeah, well, what's, what's the title of that one, please? Approval of the You must have it, Mr. Mayor, because I thought that was part of that. They're all together when we received them. No, it's the next one. It was laid on the table from in June. L14 and L15 came together, and it looks like the Mayor hasn't got them. He's well, got some of it. No, no, definitely got L16. All of them. Same later. Yeah. So 14, 15 are separate. Oh. Thank you. Uh, L15, approval for Mayor to incur legal expenses. I'd like to move that this lay on the table to a future meeting as I am getting information about amending the report. All those in favour? All those against? 8-1 if I can call for a division. Thank you. L16 I have. Thank you for your assistance. So, sorry, um, I just need to grab... Just a procedural thing, Mr Mayor. This, la this L16 one, we'll have to move for that to actually go onto the agenda, will we? If Madam it's not Mayor. in the agenda, it's been a late. So the one that the mayor just did then, oh, yeah. L fifteen. L fifteen. Yeah. yeah, that was what was the wording? Sorry. Uh, but that I moved to lay it on the table. The next another future meeting. Future meeting to receive legal advice um, in relation to amending the report. And then who was the, uh, that was just Councillor Gold. Yeah. Laid on the table. Okay. I moved it and it, it was 8-1 and I called for a division. And who was against? Uh, Councillor O'Neill. <laughs> okay, we're doing L16, request for sponsorship for Livestock and Rural Transporters Association of Queensland. So my, my question still stands, Mr Mayor to the CEO, 
was this on the original agenda? Oh yeah, that's and a good do we point. Need you to said move that, the motion yeah. to put it onto the yeah. agenda. Uh, we've subsequently uh, just looking at Emma here to fill in my blanks. Um, we've rerun the agenda with that additional report, haven't we? Oh. Did that, you updated so you just, why don't we just put it on the agenda? Yeah. We just move it on the well, agenda. Well, no, well, if you're going to, I need to um, seek advice then. In terms of a procedural motion to lay something on the table, once it's on the agenda, no conflict. I have a conflict on this matter and I'm not too sure whether I can vote to put it on the agenda, um, given I've got a conflict. Well, we don't even know if it's not on the agenda. We can keep moving anyway. If you can just bear with me for a moment. Um. Jeez, we read some curly ones today. No, I read the three of it. Yes, this is all this. Going to close. <laughs> Has anybody else got any conflicts before we go into closed? Well, we, this one's in an open now. No, but I've just... Oh. We're getting close to going into closed. Um. Yes, I have one. We need to do that before we go in there. I just got to find it. Can you just try that now, Emma, please? Just see if, oh no. Just. Yeah, will that allow you to open it now? Would you be able to post that? <laughs> Could we just adjourn for a few minutes, Mr. Mayor, and then we'll be on the agenda? Can we go to another one? <laughs> well, that's the last one before class. Sorry. Oh no, I've got to do a conflict so we could do that. Yeah. We're just looking up we're looking on the website. I'm not not this yet. It's not there yet. Well, no, the last two aren't up there either. Emma's putting it up now. No, the last two we've just moved. They're not on the public website. We do the conflict on it. Can we just oh, maybe just adjourn for a few minutes? Right, I will just adjourn for a few minutes. Okay, L16 request for sponsorship Livestock and Rural Transporters Association of Queensland. Councillor O'Neill. Um, Mayor, I'd, uh, I have a personal interest. Please go ahead. Uh, the personal interest relates to. Uh, my spouse's employment with the um, LRTAQ, uh, which is the Livestock and Rural Transport Association of Queensland. Uh, Rural Transport Association of Queensland. They have um, uh, provided a written submission to Council, uh, therefore it's a prescribed conflict of interest uh, and I will be leaving the matter while um, it is discussed and voted on. Leave the room. Leave the room while the matter is discussed and voted on. Okay, thank you, Councillor O'Neill. Okay, do we have a mover? Councillor Mullen. <coughs> Mr. Mayor, 
Sorry? Oh, no, I have some questions. No. Oh, Thank please you. go ahead. Now, I just wondered, like, um, is the um, Livestock Association, is it a voluntary sort of... I just wonder about the 10 grand. I'm not knocking whether we should or we shouldn't, but do they have other revenues? Like, mm. are they charging people yeah. to go to this thing or, you know... I, well, I just think we're not a bank. You know, like, are they financial or...? Mr Mayor, I do know, I don't know about this, this um, particular um, um, event, but you do pay to be a member, if you've got a truck, you do pay to be a member of the LTRAQ, LTRAQ but I don't know. You know where I'm coming from, Mr Mayor? So which, so which yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can understand that. Um, however, this is going to be a uh, Queensland event, um, and I think it will be quite sizable. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the, uh, they definitely don't come to us all the time, um, and they, they actually started here, which is a pretty big mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, un I understand what you're saying, but this would not be a yearly occurrence. Um, I note that the. Is Last it a one. Queensland thing or mm. Australia? Uh, Queensland. Queensland. Mm -hmm. But, okay. you know, it, it, the last one I think was in Gundawindi, where it, mm. they've done two. But it, it should be a big, pretty big event. You know, okay. But it's up to council what council does. And I think mm -hmm. in light of what you said too, Mr Mayor, I think Dr Jim Baker was one of the founding members of the, yep. the late okay. Dr Jim Baker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Okay, yeah. let, uh, we got a, Sorry. we got a, no other questions. We've got a mover. Please go ahead. Mr Mayor, I'll, <coughs> I'll move that Council 1 approve the request from the Livestock, Livestock and Rural Transporters Association of Queensland for sponsorship of their 2021 annual conference to support the Livestock Handling Workshop through provisions of the Roma Sayards venue on 7 and 8 April 2021 subject to LRTAQ in inspecting the required prov prov provisions prior to making a formal booking to assess if the provisions will meet their requirements. Three, request LR LRTAQ ensure that Council's contribution towards the workshop and the overall conference is acknowledged in any media regarding the event. And four, transfer $10,000 from local development GL 2883.2001.0301 to the sponsorship GL 2887.2249.2001 to cover the sponsorship request. I'll second that motion. Uh, any opposition? Oh, please go ahead. Through you, Mr. Mayor, Councilor Evans, uh, Manager Ed, um, just keeping track on those sponsorships and all that uh, on the GL numbers. Are they are they in this report? We were keeping a track on the well, we'll on the amount of money, weren't we? We're blowing it. We're, we're <laughs> so we've, we've got eight, one, six, oh, one sixty. What was it? One sixty. Oh, sorry, didn't see that. As oh, I yeah. Said, So is the mover happy with that extra point? Which one's that, sorry, Mr. Mayor? Uh, point four by the look of it. Oh, OK. Yeah, sorry, ensure that all attendees have completed the Roma Sale Yards entrance, entrance warning and indemnity form prior to entrance to the Sale Yards. So, so that would be, could that be um, part of uh, 
could we, just so it's not onerous to the mover, could that just be part of uh, when they sign up for the conference rather than a separate form? Um, because otherwise we've got to get every single I guess person to sign a form. Well, I think that'll happen, have to happen, Mr Mayor. I mm -hmm. think individuals will have to sign in. If we'd like you to do to go to the sale yards now, and it'll be probably a bit more intense. I wonder if it could be electronic, just like the COVID app. And so well, you can now at the sale yard. You go to the sale Tuesday mornings. I did it some weeks ago. Now mm -hmm. you just fill the form out because all my details are on the app. So I'm, I'm only <coughs> guessing that's what they'll do. But, mm -hmm. um, so it could be electronic rather than paper form. Yeah, just try and make it easy as possible. Mm. So we'll just get hard copy or electronic. Oh, oh, Excellent. Okay, I'm happy with that as well. Um, any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak to it? Certainly have been made aware that um, <coughs> the Livestock and Rural Trans Transporters Association of Queensland um, actually started in Roma, uh, as Roma is um, really the biggest in beef, um, and this is a large, large section of um, these transporters. And uh, certainly, uh, do believe if council can support a major Queensland conference, that will create economic development in our region and really help try and um, propel the economy of the region. Uh, more coming out of COVID, hopefully. Okay, anyone else wish to speak? We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? Eight zero. Mr Mayor, whilst, can I suggest, I should say, whilst Councillor O'Neill's out of the room, we have another one we laid on the table. We, can we go back to that now? Right. which one uh, was that? We, we can't because of the budget. Oh, we haven't got, okay, that's right. No worries, thank you. Good thought, though. <laughs> This is where you're going into close. Yes. Mm. Okay, so we've just dealt with L16. Uh, I might, uh, so Carl, declare a conflict on LC1, planning legal matters. Um, and I'd like to declare that, number one, uh, this is in relation to myself, um, then it is in relation to a... LC1. You, you were a submitter for the original application. Yeah, I was a submitter for the original application. Do I need to read any of these boxes out? Or? What is this for? LC1. Application to, original application to council. Uh, and therefore you will be leaving, you yes. will leave the room. I'll leave the room while the matter is discussed and voted on. Any other conflicts? Please go ahead, Councillor Taylor. On C3. C3. Approved multi venue user agreement, Wow Dance. Um, um, Dance West is is referenced in the report. So the en entity is, it's an entity which is Dance West. Yep. yep. Close personal relationship with uh, Jody. Jody Moon. Uh, the the owner, mm -hmm. the owner is a close personal, personal friend. friend. Yep. Mm -hmm. What else would you like? Um, who, who is is just the applicant for this particular matter? Is she just mentioned in the report? Um, Which report mentioned? C three. <coughs> It's on page 10 down the bottom. Yeah, that's right, that's right. I've read the wrong spot. Yep, yep. Mm. Dance West, is it? Mm. So 
so this is this is more of a, not the same as your close. This is a different entity that are in the same business sort of thing. Where? Um, or C three. It's not the same people. Is it? No, 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 no. No, I've got nothing to. I've got nothing to do with what it's about. It's just that West Dance West is is mentioned in the report. Oh. Okay. It's not the subject of the report. No, that, no. Yeah, that's probably what we need to clarify. Yeah. It's mentioned in the report but um, is is not the applicant no. under no. consideration for the through the report. Where is it mentioned down the bottom of page 10? Last paragraph. No. Oh, because it's a similar deal. Yeah. 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 Okay. One line. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I don't think we're going to get any of it. And then you, this is one that you wish to participate in discussion and yeah, decision making. Yeah, yeah. wish to uh, participate in discussion. And decision making and other councillors will, will vote on that um, and any conditions. Okay. So we, we can vote on that now. Yep. Well, it's, but the what must be the potential gain or benefit or loss for me or my close association is no greater. There's got to be a what, isn't it? I, I think it's group three. Maybe. I, I, I think we've clarified that the the owner, a close personal friend, is mentioned in the report, but is not the applicant under consideration of this report. So there's really no. It's a, it's a group three, isn't it? Sort of yeah, thing. Yeah. Exactly right. What's a group three? Um, it, it's just one that doesn't fall into any of the above categories. Right, do we have anyone that can move? Yeah, on I that? will. I'll move that. Um, I'll move that it is in the public interest that Councillor Taylor participates and votes on agenda item C three, and that and Taylor participates. What sorry? And votes and participates and votes on agenda item C three. Mm -hmm. hmm. And that a reasonable person would trust that the final decision is made in the public interest. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Edwards, any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak? We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? 8-0. Any other conflicts, councillors? Who is the seconder, sorry? Councillor Edwards. Second. Oh. You seconded the motion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any others? No other conflicts? Okay. So do we have someone that wants to move into close? Councillor Edwards? No. Provisions of Section 254J3 of the Local Government Regulation 2012 uh, that Council resolved to close the meeting to the public to discuss confidential items that its councillors consider as necessary to close the meeting. Uh, what's the next? You have to give a list. Uh, in accordance with section 254J5 of the Local Government Regulations 2012, the following table provides uh, the matters to be discussed and an overview of what is to be uh, discussed while the meeting is closed. Do you have to read out the... So read out the... I'll show it up on the screen, councillors. Um, Team Georgie. Not up on the board. Okay. Do you have a 
other phones for the ring? Does he have a phone? I thought yeah. he found one. I'm sorry, is that going too fast for you? That's too fast. That's too fast. That's all right. Is that all right? Right, was there anything after, sorry, just before yeah. I answer that question, make sure it's right. Was there anything after LC3 in the late? LC8. L3 or L3? Went to LC8. LC8 was the last one. I'm just wondering if there's anything in the... Uh, that's missing from the confidential schedule. Uh, Councillor O'Neill, you had one that oh, was here. open. Oh, I did. We've got oh, four, five, six sar yards. Sar yards, the scanning. Yeah, which was it? L6. C five in there. The uh, oh, sorry, councillor, I've left out a page. So, they're saying hail here. Yeah. 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 What hail for Roma? No, they're predicting large hail for Mitchell. Brand new cars that'll be sitting outside. You got them here now? Haven't you? No, I got I did a favour for a teacher. She's got Right, eh? Has everyone had a look at that list? Is everyone <laughs> happy with that? Is number eight on there? I'm not listening to four <coughs> Yeah, number eight. Number eight, L C eight or L C eight, Roma Airport. There it is. There it is. Thank you. And that other one that I L C six or something? Has that been added? L six, wasn't it? Or another one. That was open, wasn't it? It's open, open, but I want to go in the close. Yeah, open. Oh. L6. So L6. Page 84. L6. What was the heading? Council Request for further term extension and LIS compliance scanning. Page 84. 84. 
I'll just get the um, actual description. Yeah, probably not. We've never bothered. It don't. It usually don't last long, really. Yeah. Oh, you're not on Indian. No, it's usually pretty good. He's just north of Rome. Is getting him. Your voice is already at thirty mil. Oh, thirty, have you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's got no. Well, Lana's got no power. It's no power, so I'll have to get home and support her. Because she's right into the dark. <laughs> You might have to bring her dinner. What are you tonight? laughing at, Mayor Golda? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to excuse <laughs> myself in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to count the hands. So I've said you'll have to take takeaway. Oh, no, you make sure you take nice oh, meal home too. for her. I'll oh. see. I'm helping oh. you out here. <laughs> to go early, too. Get out of the shop at least. Yeah. No, I'm thinking you're not. Can't cook it. Can you let me home with this? Okay. Um, oh, I'm going to get the oven. Can you get the switch? The, the inclusion in the um, confidential section is to um, discuss matters. Pertaining to the current agreement. Yeah, which is the commercial matter. Yeah. Is that right? The inclusion in the confidential section is to discuss matters pertaining to the current agreement. You happy with that? Okay, so. Where are we at, Mr. Mayor? Yeah, we're looking at going into close. We've had a move it. We've had all the items that we're going to close for and the reasons. Do we have a seconder for that to go into close? Councillor Burkett. So who was the mover, sorry? Yeah. Councillor Hancock, have you you understand the, which ones we're going into? Yeah, sorry, Mr Mayor. I was just querying whether normally when we move agenda items around, we we move to move agenda items around. So I just was querying whether we should be doing that. But So we've moved a procedural motion to lay item L6 yep. to later in the meeting. Yep. To, to be able to discuss it into in, close. In close. So I, th I think that covers it. Yep. Okay, seconded by Councillor Burke. Is everyone happy we go to the vote? Sorry, who moved? Uh, Councillor Edwards, seconded by Councillor Burkett. We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? 9 0. Declare. I'll go. Yeah, I do. I have a third. Please go ahead. But um, the declaring councillor is um, Councillor Edwards. Council Edwards. Edwards, uh, the relationship um, is self. Mm. And um, yeah, so do you want yeah. to describe your your yeah, um, relationship to the item? Okay, um, I was I was a submitter. Um, Mine was a We've seven. already declared the mayor, though. Yeah. We yeah. probably need to. Yeah, we didn't put a peel in there. But anyway, people get it. Submitter, yeah, to the original um, application by the company. Yep. yep. So, I was part, part of the. Sorry. By we can do proprietary limited. Uh, yes, I was a submitter to um, basically the object. Uh, objection to the initial uh, application. You provided a written submission? Yes. Yes. And 
what's your intention? Um, I'm just wondering about the related. <clears throat> so on the uh, number one, on the actual um, first, have the personal interest, the relationship. I'm just just wondering what the uh, related party area is there. That's all. It, it would be self. self. Yeah. Self. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. I can go either way then. So it's probably okay. better it, um, yeah. to, to leave and leave the room while the matter is discussed and voted on. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because it's very much in the orange space because it the matter is ongoing. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Even though it's the original application, it's probably too close to not go. Uh -huh. Right, I will. I'll um, leave the room. Certainly, yeah. So leave the room while the matter is discussed and voted on. Mm. Mayor, I'll move that we go in to closed. Right, do we have a seconder? <coughs> Councillor Burkett. Uh, all those in favour? Sorry, sorry um, councillors, can I just clarify? We're going back into closed to discuss LC. One and LC two. LC one. LC one. Yeah. Well, well, before we go into close, oh, we haven't got the press here because we could do ads. Um, yeah. Just for information, oh, oh, that's a good point. Um, yeah. So count. Councillors, I've just updated the executive summary to read um, the report provides council with an update on legal matters in the Planning Environment Court appeal and originating application number 3784 of 2018 and 69 of 2019. We can do proprietary limited v MRC, council reference 2013 slash 18600. No, I, I want to go into the committee. <coughs> so we have a mover and we had a second to Council Burkett. All those in favour? Nine zero. <laughs> LC1, Planning Legal Matters, reference 2013 forward slash 18600. Do I have a mover, please? Yeah, I'll move. Councillor O'Neill. I'll move the council receive and note the officer's report as presented. Second, to please. Councillor Taylor. Any opposition to the motion? Anyone wish to speak for or against? Okay, I'll put it to the vote. All those in favour? 7 0. Are we going back to. Would we, keep Should we do whatever um, Manager Ed said for? Yeah. Yeah, we've got to get the other. We'd have, there's no more for those fellas to be out of the room, now, is there? Thanks, Cameron. Yeah. Sorry. In the open, isn't it? The original open. Question, option A or option B? Please, yeah, please go ahead. Through you, Mr Mayor, the recommendation should have read option B as the preferred site. That's that site there closest to the existing netball courts. Makes a whole lot of sense. So that's that's the, the, the recommendation should be option B. Okay. Which is stated in the report as their preference. And we didn't have anyone move that? No, no we laid it on the no. table. Right, oh, Councillor Hancock. I move that um, is Madam CEO ready? I might just Well I'm just gonna um, as per officer's recommendation. Um, I move that Council One support Marino and Netball Association with their request to provide two temporary grass courts for the inter district Inter-district netball competition to be held on 18th of July 2021, <coughs> as per option B of this report. Two, costs associated, costs associated with the provision of temporary line marking and installation of four sleeves for, in, 
for installation of netball posts estimated at $3,000 to be costed at GL 2887.2248.2001, in-kind major assistance. Three, Maranoa Netball Association acknowledge Council's contribution in all advertising for this event and during the inter-district netball competition. Okay, do we have a seconder? Councillor Burkett, any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak to it? Uh, yeah, I will, Mr Mayor. Please go ahead. I just want to acknowledge, Mr Mayor, that this is a, a um, wonderful opportunity to be holding um, inter-district inter netball carnival in Roma. And um, and I am you know think that Council should do whatever they can to to support these these sort of events because, um, as it says in the report, it's going to bring approximately 50, uh, 500 netballers um, to our region. And um, so I, I think I fully support this uh, recommendation. Okay, no one else wishes to speak? Sorry, who, who is the second, if sorry? Yeah. Councillor Burke. Councillor Burke. And did we change to option B? Yeah. CEO. Yeah, it's when we have to change order that I've got to go and pick it up from where it was to bring it down. Um, that's the cumbersome little bit. And that was the only change. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to the vote. All those in favour? Nine, zero. Right, eight. What's next? 13.9, page 229, if we're, if we're doing the ones that the manager is here for. Yep. 13.9, request to host Opera Queensland 2021 tour. Are you lonesome tonight? We just had a couple of questions. Uh, manager Ed, would you like to enlighten council? Uh, so the question that we had that I recall was about ticket pricing. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so we did circulate an email earlier today, uh, but I'll just read, uh, read out the suggestion for a, compression, a concession price of $30 for seniors and a family of four for $120. That includes two adults and two children under 18. But uh, just bear in mind, Councillor, that that pricing does include um, drinks and canapes at the opening. Oh, okay. Yeah. So there is a little bit of value add in there, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, was there any other? Oh, to do with the uh, rails. We, uh, yeah, because I believe if we do this, we really need to look at doing all the rails to make it, <sighs> to get, if, if, do, do we know the numbers we got last time when we did one of these opera? 110, I think it was, people. Um, which means we're going to use quite a bit of that area out there. I think so. Reasonably expect that you would, um, mm -hmm. you'd have a. Um, so I understand that handrails were installed in January, <coughs> trial barrier and grab rail on the second tier of the stuck, stud socks, stock selling arena. Uh, tour guides have provided really good feedback about that, so that seems to be satisfactory as far as they're concerned. And there's been no other negative feedback received uh, from from the sale yards users. Uh, Director Kim, you got anything to add to that at all? Um, through you, Mr. Mayor, there's there's about 200 and 230 seats in that facility, so that sort of will give an idea of how much will be in there. Um, it's probably just understanding if there was a, a want for more rail. Is is how much? Like we've obviously done one one bay of the top. Of, of the top there um, as a trial just before, just after Christmas. So um, the question that was asked to me was, would it be possible to do it before the event? There's, there's more than enough time to to, to uh, do that. It would be just needing some budget to to, to, um, to, to get that sorted um, there and how many how many of the top bay w w would need to be done. So it was about, I think it was about five, a bit over five f for the bay. So I think there's three more on the top there. So in the order of, you sort of said to Director Sharon, 15 to 20 would probably do that whole top run, which would which probably give uh, 25 to 30 seats with, with the rail um, protecting them. So. Yeah, uh, do we have what's in the Sayards Reserve Fund, uh, Director? No. 
Well done. And from memory, I don't think we had. <coughs> well, there'll be a lot, I think, last time we raised. I don't think there's anything else in Sunrise Reserves. D do we bring a report to the to the mm -hmm. next one? Can like, report back? Bring, we could bring a report back to the to the next meeting. It still provides heaps of time. It's all designed. They're all designed, ready to go. It's just just buying them, so it's still it's adequate time. It's I know it's not the right time to raise it now, but I think when budget coming up, we're going to have a little bit of serious thing about putting some of those fees up at the sale yards, especially while cattle prices are so good. You know. Well, yeah. Yeah, some of them are ten or twelve dollars. I can't remember exactly off the top of my head, but twelve dollars. You know, and you're getting. $1,700 for a cow. We are getting the report ready for the Pardon? pricing charges. Report, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah. But maybe, yeah. Uh, and did we, did we anyone move this? Yes, I did. Oh, it's got Councillor Golder so up there. No, Councillor. Oh, right, okay. Councillor O'Neill, I've written here. Yeah, Councillor O'Neill, go ahead. Um, I'll start again. I'll move that Council accept the proposal from Opera Queensland to perform RU Lonesome tonight at the Roma Sayards Bull Ring on Thursday, the 3rd of January 2021. Allocate funds from the regional arts. I think you said 3rd of January. 3rd of June. Yeah, Did I? Yeah. 3rd of June 2021. Um, allocate funds from the Regional Arts Development Fund RADF budget GL2885. Double two five zero two double zero one of up to six thousand dollars. Provide the Roma Sale Yards Bull Ring as the stage for the opera and the use of the multi-purpose meeting room by performers. Ensure that all attendees have completed the Roma Sale Yards entrance warning and indemnity form prior to entrance of the sale yards. Agree to the proposed ticket price of forty-five dollars per adult, thirty dollars for seniors. $30 for under 18 and a family ticket price of $120 for two adults and two children. And just to the move. Just, just, oh, I haven't finished. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor. Six, authorise the CEO to sign the agreement on behalf of Aranoa Regional Council. And seven, Madam CEO, are you ready? I've got Council consider a report at a future meeting. A report detailing costs. Sorry, because the preface thing is that Council accept, allocate, provide, ensure, agree, authorise, so it needs that Council consider. Can get the mother now? I am. All right. The council consider a report de detailing the costs for installing railing in the Roma Sayards Bull Ring. <coughs> Is it additional railing? Correct. Remainder of the railing. Is this for the whole complex well, or is this remi remaining for the remainder of the top section? Top. Or was that a top section? Top, that's what you said. Uh, yeah, I um. My take on this, I'd obviously will prepare this report. I'll, I'll give two options of it: full complex and then top rail only. Then, mm -hmm. then you can you've got two options to consider then. So. Um, top. Top section. Top tier. Top tier. Yep. Um, and also, would that would that have it so we we could know <coughs> per, per row what it would cost if we want to do four rows or six rows or for mm. sure, Mr. Mayor. Yep, I'll, I'll, it'll be itemised out so that top you can tier option. and per row. Yep, or top. Okay, do we have a seconder? Um, Councillor O'Neill, I'm not sure I've. I've got the right, the pricing right. Agree to the price ticket price of forty five dollars per adult, thirty dollars for seniors, uh, thirty dollars for under eighteen, and a family of four hundred and twenty dollars. That was two adults and two children. Mm. Big bud. It's got thirty dollars for seniors.
And then the in the original today it was thirty dollars for under eighteens on their own. <coughs> so you're uh, putting that, that in as well. Yep. It was the yeah. It should be there. Yeah. Which sort of makes sense because it's um, thirty dollars by four is one hundred and twenty, which is oh no that well that makes no sense. that doesn't make sorry. But I don't think it makes. I'm happy to second that motion. Is there? Sorry. Yeah. No, just, I'm just, I'm a bit rusty on my math, but family of four for hundred and twenty dollars. That's no, they must no get a discount. Yeah, they must get a discount for the adults. Yeah, but for two adults is ninety. Two adults is ninety, and then sixty for the kids. Yeah, yeah it's so one hundred and fifty. So they're getting a the twenty yeah. thirty dollar yeah. discount. That's right. Yeah. That's what's confusing. They they are getting a discount if it's family. Thirty as they go as family. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Concession. If it's two adults and two children, they'll get some concessions. They'll get $30. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It was the same. You can call it a family thing. That's right. Like individually, but no one was calling it a family yeah. concession. Yeah. Yeah. Councillor Ladbrook. Um, Director Cameron, I just wondered, you know, it sounds like a silly question, but you know when you put those rails in, they aren't in a position where, no. you know, talking they've about. sort of worked that out where... Yeah, it's good. It's a good question. Um, top, the top tier is pretty right. Um, yep. we'll, we'll have to be very, and I'll, I'll detail this in the report. We'll just have to be very careful as we start because to go there's down. Nothing worse than yeah, because as you start to go down, you'll start to level out. Mm. And can we have some pump seats? Yeah, you might just you Maybe might just find push it somewhere around uh, myself. Find that whilst the top tier is being managed, okay. If you do the second tier. The actual um, top tier might be then fouled by the, the second tier railing. So, mm. but anyway, that's fine. We'll um, we we'll might, we might have some volunteer councillors that test it for you. Yeah, it's just Our a good deputy point. director. Might have to take a buffet. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> okay, we're going to move on a seconder. Any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak? Just to say, Mr. Mayor, that um, one of the intentions of um, building. Uh, the new facility out there was to attract a myriad of, um, you know, um, uh, entertainment for the region. And I think uh, a lot of the feedback that we received when we uh, were uh, out to consultation on the plan for the Bull Ring was people saying that it would be fantastic to hold an opera and or concert there. And I think having um, an opportunity for uh, local people to, um, you know, enjoy an opera out at the sale yards and, and uh, smell the sale yards while they're doing it. I think that's a good thing. So I'm um, very happy to move the resolution. Okay, we're going to go. No one else wishes to speak. We're going to the vote. All those in favour? Nine zero. Uh, do you have any other reports? Thirteen point six, page ninety six. Um, Felton Industries voucher. Was that was that Ed? Is that Councillor Wendy Newman? Uh, no. Did I? Yeah. <laughs> I just picked well, it. one exists. That's right. Thanks, Councillor. I, I read that. Oh, it, it was a bit. It's the old one. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Thank you, Councillor. Sorry. Uh, no, thanks for that. All these. Yeah. Thanks for that. Um, Councillors, with this one here, we had some discussion there about um, certainly maybe using the, the, that to offset the cost of maybe affordable grandstand, and which then could be actually used around the region. So I was just talking to the Deputy Director and to, to uh, Manager Ed. Maybe we just lay it on the table. We bring a report back next yeah. month, showing mm -hmm. some options. Like mm -hmm. anything, so maybe some uh, but, yeah, but that's just, I don't need a decision on it today. You've given us something else to think about in terms of maybe getting something bigger and sharing it around the region. We've got some photos there, some coffee, but maybe that will be coming back as a report next, next meeting. Mayor, I'll move that this matter lays on the table to the next ordinary meeting. Right, eh? Um, and also with that, could we find out from um, uh, Netball, which is one of the largest groups in uh, Old Maranoa, do they have any need for any extra seating as well as to get both groups? And, and that was the point of that. They just need a bit of Netball, and particularly where, how we access the, access the voucher anyway. We thought with something like that grandstand, that would actually, they would be able to use it because as we've seen with the other report today, you know, they are using other parts of Bassett Park for big events and something like this could actually benefit netball by being able to move around, so... That's okay, so we're going to go to that vote. All those to lay it on the table. 
Nine zero. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. Thanks, Ed. Thanks, Ed. If you want to keep going through the white to finish the laying of the table. Yeah, what's next? L L six. What page number, please? Four. L6, and we had a motion on this one. We had a mover and a seconder. Um, okay, so uh, any opposition to the motion? Uh, does the mover wish to speak to the motion? Can I just... Double. Yeah, yeah we, we had a mover in a second, but I should actually announce it. Yeah. L6, request for further term extension of NLIS, Compliance Scanning and Data Collection Services Agreement, Roman Sale Yards. So just for people's benefit, I have uh, moved that um, council not approve the request um, and it was seconded by the Deputy Mayor. We, do, we didn't take a vote at that time, Correct. though, no, um, that there was a procedural motion yeah. that um, it lay on the, lay table. On the table. So um, I guess it's up to the mover and seconder whether... Yeah, so you, are you happy to still second that motion? Yeah. Yep. Right, Ape, so that's the motion. Uh, I'll speak for the motion. I believe it's in the local government's best interest to go out uh, to tender again for this contract. Uh, where all uh, inter interested parties um, can um, uh, put their best fit foot forward for this uh, tender. And um, that's what I'll be recommending this, um, which is, uh, I believe, in the best competitive uh, reasons for the Maranoa and Roma sale yards um, as it's moving forward in the future. Okay, would someone like to speak against the motion? Councillor O'Neill. Um, oh, Mayor, uh, just to say that um, I, I disagree with the resolution that you've uh, uh, put forward to Council. I think the uh, recommendation that has been tabled by the manager of sale yards and the compelling reasons as to why that is before us um, uh, to extend this for two years uh, is sound and um, I, I encourage councillors to support the, um, the officer's recommendation. Would anyone else wish to speak? Uh, for or against? Uh, well then I'll sum up. Um, I believe uh, certainly it could be a situation that the status quo remains. But I believe the best way to test that and the healthiness uh, in this situation as far as competition is to put it out uh, um, to tender again. Um, and that's why I believe this motion, if it's supported, will be the best of both worlds. Okay, on that note, we'll go to the vote. All those in favour? All those against? Uh, carried six... Uh, all those against? Yeah, uh, carried 5-4, if I can call for a division. OK, moving on. L11, page 135. L11, thank you. To do the budget one. Oh, yeah, but first, yeah. before you do that, oh, sorry. Don't you do yeah, that. I wasn't here, so, yeah. yeah. Um, L14, page 150. Are oh, we doing L8? No, that's, that's the policy review is to the next meeting, isn't it? It is, yeah. Okay. That's the guess. I'll guess. check who the four was. O'Neill, Hancock, Guthrie and uh, Taylor. What did you say for next page? <coughs> um, 150. That's a lot. Okay, I don't think I've got that one. What? Which one is that one it's for? The council of, uh, it's in the, the main right. Gas for yeah. Industrial Commercial. Oh, Department. main. Like oh, yeah. Day. Well... Uh, what page? 150. Happy to lay it on the table and have the next meeting with Graham. Graham, Graham came in. Graham's got the feedback that he needed, so he just needs to go out. I must have been out of the room when he was in. Did you say 150? I haven't got it. 
Right. But, but it's the it's the one that was okay. Made. Can I have the title, please? It's um, gas for industrial commercial okay. development okay. policy. Okay. Yeah. Gas for industrial commercial um, policy. Development policy. Development policy. Development policy. Yeah. And okay, but not for laying it on the table. I don't think. Would you? That's oh, procedural no, motion. No. Well, that's yeah. what I'm jumping in to do. But oh, okay. hmm. that's right. That's what no, we said last time. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I'm going to move that we lay. The, I'm moving that we lay this on the table to the next ordinary meeting of council, where we'll have an opportunity to discuss with the relevant manager. All those in favour? Yeah, you I'm are on a laying on the procedural. <laughs> yeah. Nine zero. Okay. What's the next one, please? Sorry, what, was that? Well, what was the budget? Oh, what was the number for that one? I beg your pardon. I've got it. That's the second one we've done now because. Um, that's my bad. We'd already moved to lay that on the table to the next meeting. I've got to oh, do yeah, my well, notes. I, I, sorry, Councillor. No, no, no. It was the, just that Graham had I wasn't aware that it made the late agenda. And I'd run Graham and Councillor. I thought you had laid it on the table till Graham had come up. But we had. Oh, yeah. We had. We had. We had. Yeah. So yeah. Later in the meeting. Right. To the next meeting, we'd lay it on the table. You're correct on how you handled it, Councillor. Later in the meeting. You just laid it on the table for That's later. Like and came up for a while. Oh, I see. Right. Okay. Where are we now? We're now on to the late. Oh, what about this? Otherwise, it's laid on to the next meeting. You too. can't do it until the budget's done. So that was L14, that last one. This has been a day. So it's C1. Yeah. C1, saving historical asset. I think we've got some wording on the screen. Do you want to move that, Councillor Apple? Yep. Um, I'd just like to move that. Um, it's up on the screen. Would you be able to blow it up, CEO, please? I'm still on the last one. <laughs> okay, we'll just pause for a second. Because we need to get through it a little bit longer. Oh, dear. I could see Kelly getting a new office or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It was a patchy red that went over here. You did four. Red and what was the gas policy one mm. that was laid on the table to the next yeah. meeting? That's correct. Do we have a number for that? L14? Yeah, L14. L14. And who moved that? Sorry. I did. Councillor O'Neill. And then 9 0. 9 0. Okie okay, dokie. Okay, we're right to go. And if you could blow that up, CEO, please. Yeah, I can read that. I've got someone's car over there. Um, I'd just like to move um, that the mayor be authorised to have a preliminary discussion and report and report back to council. Do we have a second for that? Councillor Edwards, any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak to it? We're going to the vote. All those in favour? Nine zero. Okay, C2, request for approval to construct a new carport at Major Mitchell Caravan Park. Councillor Burkett. Uh, I'd like to move the Council provide in principle consent to Cashwell West Proprietary Limited to construct a wide span steel standalone carport at the Major Mitchell Caravan Park on the following conditions. That the structure conforms with all relevant building approvals and processes. That the structure be built on Council freehold land described as lot 49 on M. One five one one four. Do we have a seconder? Councillor McMullen. That's as recommendation. Councillor McMullen. Yep. He's the seconder. Okay, does anyone wish to speak to it? No, sir. We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? Nine zero.
C3, multi venue user agreement, wow, dance. Do we have a mover? Councillor Taylor. RSL Memorial Hall. Two, agree to use the Surratt Supper Room and the Injun RSL Memorial Hall at a discounted rate of $14.35 per hour. Three, use it to provide council with a copy of their insurance certificate of currency to the value of $10 million. And four, authorise the exec uh, Chief Executive Officer or Delegate to sign the agreement. Yeah, and we just changed the yeah. preference oh, there. Um, council, council, the, and then council, oh, if sorry. you're okay with that. Yeah. That's fine, sorry. Uh, I'd be happy to second that. Um, Councillor Taylor, I'm wondering, is there any opportunity to put in there that if that's uh, any struggle for the, you know, the applicant that we could hear from them if, if, if there's any, um, you know, different size venues doing different things and the amount of people going. Um, like that, that would be the obviously the offer. But if there's, if it's if it's a, a struggle to to be able to afford that with the amount of kids that would be using it, is there some it mechanism? Come back to council. Yeah, just some mechanism to come back if. I, I think yeah, that's what well, we need some certainty for this particular oh, yeah. item. Th this is the certainty. This is the price. And but but, is, but it could there be an extra point to say if if it's unworkable please contact council or something that might yeah. would that trigger them to yeah well i just might. noticed it's the supper room so mayor you've proposed an amendment the, the mover hasn't accepted it so now you need to move that oh I was just amendment. asking well, well and she rejected oh. it so you need to seek now move that formally and get a second up. so just sorry council just uh, just that the process would be because it happens quite a bit we have we have set fees and charges in our fees and charges so any part of the building we've got a, a price on it if someone uh, has uh, wants to pay a lesser amount that it goes back to Tanya's and her team, and we prepare a report anyway. So oh, yeah, they right don't right. specifically need it in your resolution. We right. we can oh, we can, we can accommodate that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, does anyone wish to speak to it? No. We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? Nine zero. Mm -hmm. Mayor did. The mayor seconded. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, oh, moving on. C four Australian Government Local Roads and Community Infrastructure. Programs. I would like to move to that council approve project variations for Australian Government local roads and community infrastructure program phase one as presented in option two. Um, it's up there, Mr. Mayor, on the screen. Yeah, I was just seeing what option two was again. Just the one you wanted. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, approve the Recommended project nominations for Australian Government Local Roads and Community Infrastructure Program Phase 2 as presented in the report and pro progress to seek the Australian Government's approval for these projects. And there was only one table in the report, wasn't there, for that Phase 2, is that correct? That's correct. Yes. Yeah. Righto. And three, authorise the Chief Executive Officer to sign the variation request and submissions forms and any further grant agreements as required. We have a second to Councillor O'Neill. Any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak? And it's just simple as submission. Submission. Submission forms. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'd just like to say. We've got a fantastic opportunity. There's going to be, I believe, some very happy communities if this is um, adopted. Um, and we'll look forward to being able to deliver as councillors for the Maranoa community as a whole. OK. Uh, well, if no one else wishes to speak. Who we... is the second? Sorry. Um, Me. Neil. Um, we're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? Nine zero. Very dangerous words, Councillor Burkett. Are we 
We've done LC1, yeah. we're on LC2. Yeah, there you go, see, so we've got an Page start. five. Hmm. On the end of pink. LC2. Okay, LC2. Planning Legal Matters, reference 2012 slash 180048. Uh, do we have a mover? Councillor Edwards. I move that Council receive and note the officer's report as presented. We have a second of Councillor Hancock. Any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak to it? We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? 9-0. Sorry, what page number? Eight. 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 Thank you. Uh, LC3, application for a permit to occupy land adjoining <laughs> lot two on BDR 87. We have a mover, Councillor McMullen. Mr <coughs> Mayor, I'll move that Council one of no objection to the application for a permit to occupy over land adjoining lot two on BDR, BDR 87 as identified on provided map for the purpose of grazing on the condition that it is noted that the land is still required for its intended purpose and there is no interference with the safe movement of tra traffic or the safe use of the road and that the application is submitted to the Department of Resources within 12 months of the applicant receiving council's response. Two, as road manager, authorise the use of the land Use, authorise the use of the land be dealt with under the Land Act 1994 by the Department of Resources. Three, authorise the Chief Executive Officer or Delegate to sign Part C statement in relation to an application under the Land Act 1994 over state land in respect to this application. Okay, uh, Councillor Burkett is a seconder. Any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak? We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? 9-0. Page 6. LC4. Uh, Australian Government Roads of Strategic Importance. Rossi. We have a mover. Councillor Burkett. I'd like to move that Council 1 approve the Acadia Valley Road upgrade project as recommended project to be submitted to the South West Regional Road and Transport Group for the Australian Government's Road of Strategic Importance Program. Two, authorise the Chief Executive Officer or Delegate to sign any project nomination documentation required. And three, authorise the Chief Executive oh no, oh yeah, Chief Executive Officer or Delegate to sign the funding agreements if the project is successful. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Edwards, any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak? We're going to the vote. All those in favour? 9-0. Page 7. Page 7. What's the next page number, please? 38. 38, thank you. LC5, support for Life Flight Roma. Councillor O'Neill. I'll move the council. Pursuant to section 2362 of the Local Government Regulation 2012, the Council grant the lease or leases that leases the subject of the following resolutions without tender or auction on the basis that the lease or leases are to be granted to a community organisation as permitted by the um, exception conferred by section 2361B2 of the Local Government election Regulation 2012. Two, the Council grant one or more leases to Life Flight Australia Limited, a charity registered with the Australian Charities and Not-for-Profits Commission over part of the freehold land owned by Council at the Roma Airport, subject to the following conditions. A, a total term including options to renew of the lease or leases is to not exceed 20 years. B, the rent will be determined by Council's Chief Executive Officer or Delegate having regard to the nature of the services that a Life Flight Australia Limited will provide to the local community. C, Council and the Life Flight Australia Limited reaching agreement on the terms and conditions of the lease or leases, 
including without limitation the size and specific location of the premises to the satisfaction of Council's Chief Executive Officer or Delegate. D, Life Flight Australia Limited being granted financial assistance in the Building Better Regions Fund in the current round. And E, the offer for a lease will lapse if the above conditions are not met on or before the 31st of December 2021. Three, subject always to the preceding resolutions that the Chief Executive Officer or Delegate is authorised to A, negotiate and accept the terms of the lease with Life Flight Australia Limited or its delegate, and B, sign the lease and any associated documentation, including documents, to confirm Council support for the project. I'll, I'll uh, second that motion. <coughs> Councillor O'Neill, I'm just wondering whether you would be thinking of just making that offer for an extra year because it seems pretty tight, especially if they go round for another round of funding. I'm happy to amend it to 2022. Right, I'm happy to agree with that. Okay, um, any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak to it? Just to say, Mr Mayor, that um, uh, Lifelight uh, provide uh, a fantastic service to our community. Um, the work that they've done, um, I I've already seen firsthand uh, is saving lives. Uh, having been uh, at a, uh, a, a, an event at, at Muckadilla where an individual uh, needed uh, the life flight um, helicopter and uh, from all reports it saved his life. Um, so uh, anyway, the, this council and um, uh, you know, more broadly the community can support uh, such a fantastic charity and the services they provide, then we should get behind it. Um, yeah, and I'd, I'd just like to say I totally agree. I also believe that it is it is even more life saving if they get their designated uh, base because now they have to shift a um, helicopter out of um, different uh, facilities, and it does take time, and it it actually increases the response time. So having a purpose built facility means they'll get in the air quicker. Um, so I certainly support this and I would like to see that we as uh, council could find ways that we could actually increase uh, the footprint of um, life flight here in the future by council working together. So I certainly think this is the first step in um, how we can uh, all work together. And does anyone else wish to speak? We'll go to the vote. Oh, well, would, would there's a mover wish to sum up? We're going to the vote. All those in favour? Nine zero. Okay. 54. Thank you. Change it. Didn't yeah. LC6, commencement of legal proceedings. Councillor Hancock. I move that council not approved to commence with legal proceedings. Okay. Um, and uh, do we have a seconder? Councillor Burkett. Uh, could, could I just clarify the wording? Not approve the commencement? That council not approve. To be, commence the legal could proceedings. Could we just say not approve the commencement of legal proceedings? That's fine. Okay, we had a mover and second. Are happy with that? Yep. Any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak? Uh, no, Ms. Mills, I'd like to say is um, I don't believe we'll need to do a statement of reason on this one because um, the officer changed the, her, their recommendation. Would that be correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay, well, no one wishes to speak. We're going to the vote. All those in favour? 9 0. Next uh, number, please. 62. 62. Thank you. LC7, quarter two, 2020, 2021 budget review. Do we have a mover? Councillor Edwards. I'll move that Council 1 approve the quarter two, 2020, 2021 capital and operational budget amendments as shown in the reports attachments. Uh, to authorise the Chief Executive Officer or Delegate to sign project variations uh, for budget amendments for externally funded projects as required as part of the quarter uh, to 2020-21 budget review. Uh, three, approve the revised financial statements for quarter two 2020-21 budget amendments as shown in the report's attachments. Uh, A, um, Revenue Policy 2020 uh, 21, B Revenue Statement 2020-21, C Revised Budget Financial Statements 2020-21 and the following two years, D Revised Financial <coughs> Statements 2020-21 and following nine years, 
E, revised financial sustainability ratios 2020-21, and F, total value of changes uh, of change in rates and charges. And, uh, and that the documents be placed on the Council website at http www.baronard.queensland.gov.au forward slash council forward slash budgets. And it just insert the extra it? budget word in. Um, oh, sorry. In point D. Point D. Uh, revised right. budget. budget financial oh, sorry. Statements, yeah. uh, revised budget. Missed, financial statements. We just missed that word. Oh, right. Okay. Okay, we have a second one. Uh, Councillor Taylor, any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak to it? We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? 9 0. Thank you. Uh, LC8, Roma Airport. We have a mover, Councillor O'Neill. I'll move the council make a development application for reconfiguring a lot in accordance with the proposal outlined in this report and authorise the CEO or delegate to give land owners consent for the application and endorse any other documentation necessary to facilitate the pro proposed, de proposed development. We have a seconder, Councillor Edwards. Any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak to it? We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? 9-0. One more. Uh, back to 103 on late items. It's a debt recovery. No, no, that's been that's laid over to the next meeting. Oh, is that well, what was it? Oh, it was the IOR. 135. Yeah, I thought. Yeah, yeah, no, it was just till later in the meeting, I think. So which one first you going to do? So what was the number? One, one, page 135. No, no, page number there. Was it 105, was it? Well, the debt recovery is 105, Mr. Yeah, it started. Uh, we need a number, please. Uh, so L8. Thank you. L8. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, 103. 103. Okay, so I am happy to actually uh, change the uh, what I'm going to move to actually move that council adopt the debt recovery policy as presented. Uh, basically, councillors, because we've had a discussion, I think there's enough flexibility to do what I believe we could do in the future with the policy as far as a waiver. So, um, is there a seconder? So what okay. Did you, what did you move? Sorry. So originally I moved. Um, oh, maybe I only just <coughs> moved that. Maybe I only moved it to, to lay on the table. But I was going to move. An you did move. You didn't have a seconder though for what you yeah. were moving. Yeah. Yeah, and I've changed that now to, mm -hmm. as per the officer's recommendation. I'll second that. Okay. Uh, well, Councillor Taylor, did you second that or you asked a question? No, so it is Councillor yeah. O'Neill. Uh, any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak? We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? 9-0. Okay, the next one. Uh, 135, you say. Righto. L11, request for support of construction of cattle cross loading station exec execution of agreement. Councillor McMullen. Did we have a move? No, I didn't write, well, I didn't write it down anyway. No. Um, yeah. Well, we just wait for the CEO, L11. Yeah, you moved it. I only to lay it on the table. Yeah. Moved it to load on the table. Mm. Okay, so I'll move that. I better read it off the board. Sorry, won't be a moment. So that I get it right. It should be the same as what's on the table. So why do we have to wait just in case we need something from the budget? Because it's out of budget. It's out of budget. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah You've got to have the funds there first before you. Oh, okay. Okay, so I move that council. Pursuant to section 236 of the Local Government Act 2009, authorise the Chief Executive Officer to execute the contribution deed 
between Maranoa Regional Council and IOR Petroleum Petrodia Limited to supply and deliver road-based material for the construction of a cattle cross-loading station <coughs> on the western side of Roma. Okay, we have a second there. Uh, well, gee, I think the first one was Councillor Ladbrook. <laughs> <laughs> um, must be the last one of the day. <laughs> I, I need to start a bugger. Um, and uh, any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak? We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? Eight zero. Any other council um, re so um, reports? We just need to bring um, Councillor yeah. O'Neill back. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, no, council, is there any further business? Surely not. Okay. Well, I'll close the meeting at seven forty-three p.m. and thank you for your attendance.